What's going on all you sexy subscribers? Lift weights, eat steak here. Out here with the man, the myth, the legend, Alex Cook, AKA Captain Cook, because you're a captain now. Yep. Uh, if you have any other AKAs, feel free to drop them below. Well, we'll just go with that, but alexcook.com. I uh, got a YouTube my own. I'm on Spotify, Apple Podcasts as well, so all my social media is on there if you uh, if you want to check out what I have to say as well. All right, and we got a little scenic podcast today. Usually we're uh, we're in my apartment or my or up, upstairs in my parents' house and just yep. talking behind a wall, but today we got a nice little view. We're outdoors. Your boy's going to be sweating a lot, but it's cool. I love the sunlight, and uh, we only get more vitamin D in our life anyway, and so, yeah. Now we got a special surprise. Usually on the medium rare podcast we have steak, but today we uh, decided to do a little something different because of uh, July Fourth. We got some, we got some brisket. You know it's crazy. So I lived in Texas since 2014, and I have never been to this place, Terry Black's. Uh, so uh, I was stationed in Colleen uh, at Fort Hood. I just got out of the military. Um, but uh, even though even though I was that close to Austin, never actually been in Terry Black, so it's famous Austin spot, which is now in Dallas. So I'm I'm very curious to try this. Yeah, man, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be solid. Yeah, we got two pounds of moist brisket. Ooh, okay. So this is what uh, this is looking like. You know it's you know it's real brisket. Oh, I didn't even yeah. get any forks. It's all good. We'll make it happen. We just I'll, I'll, I'll to the bar grab some. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I usually just eat brisket with my hands, but this is uh, I don't know if you use sauces if you want to unwrap those. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that one. This is look at that. Yeah, this is what it's look looking like right now. Look and at so, that. So uh, we don't know how how much of this is gonna be left after we're done. This is like a little over two pounds. The guy just kind of kept chopping, and I yeah. didn't tell him to stop. My my two go-to places in Dallas uh, for barbecue: uh, Pecan Lodge and Deep Ellum. Oh, it's yes. kind of like the the classic, you know. That's like when people visit Dallas. It's one they mentioned, but uh, a really hidden gem that you should check out. Uh, it's kind of off the beaten path a little bit, but it's right next to my old apartment, 18th and Vine. I want to give them a big shout out. That's the name of the barbecue place? Yeah. 18th I, and Vine? I feel like they don't get the recognition they deserve, but they are really good. Uh, you're not going to have to wait in line all day. It is a low key place, but mm. it is it is really good. 18th and Vine. Check that out if you're in Dallas. Nice. You ever been to uh, Lockhart's if you ever make your way up to oh, yeah. Plano or uh, um, South Dallas? They had a Lockhart's in um, Bishop Arts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. I just realized napkins would have been a great idea too, but. I'll get some. <laughs> I didn't get it. Yeah. Yeah, this is a uh, this is very, you know, I really like the run and gun setups of uh, the way I film. Like, all yeah. my all my YouTube videos on my personal channel and the, the uh, Minority NT channel where we do the interviews, those are all, like, just literally, yep. this this is a setup for all, the, for all that, so. Just kind of stitch uh, together in a post-processing later. Yeah, yeah, pretty much I'll just, like, do everything in post and it just comes out. Yeah, it comes out looking good. So I mean, the Can't more complain. you shoot, the more you can edit down. So exactly, yeah. Cool. We got. Uh, I think this is the original barbecue sauce. There's a spicy, yeah. and then there's like a tangy. I think that's what the T stands for. Yeah. So. All right. Yeah. Well, how, how about I just rip a piece off and we'll. Oh we'll yeah, like man. That. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll just get after it. Grab this big chunk Let's right do here. It. Cheers, bro. Do up. Yeah, big I shout like out that. to Terry Blacks. I like that. Yeah. The, the hype is real. The hype is real. The hype is real. I was in Austin two months ago. Yeah. And there was such a big line to get into Terry Blacks in Austin. Hmm. But here in Dallas, there's like almost never a line. Huh. And I think it's because Joe Rogan shouted out Terry Blacks on his podcast. Oh, uh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Apparently, he's there all the time. Well, I feel also... I mean, Austin is... It is a smaller city, and it is a destination city. So... I'll be honest, it can be hard getting it into res uh, reservation Friday, Saturday nights for some uh, pretty popping places. You gotta make that reservation like a couple days in advance. <clears throat> right. Where uh, Lambert's is kind of my go to place mm. in Austin for barbecue. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a place you wait in line at, it's a place to make a reservation, but you'll, if you want to go there on Friday, you gotta make the reservation like Monday. Of the week, of that same week? Yeah. Oh, wow. So it, it's not like New York Extreme where you gotta make reservations like multiple weeks in advance, but mm. for us, the standards get there. Whereas Dallas, I mean, this is the fourth largest metro in the country, so you have a lot of dining options here. So true, true, yep. true, true. Dang man, that's awesome. So, I'm just like gonna I was do it like you, this. Yeah, say it again. I'm just gonna do it like this. Oh, dude, yeah, that's, yeah. that's that's what we do, man. Just Let's go full caveman style. Tear it apart. Yeah. Yep. Sometimes I'll just eat a steak like that with my hands. Mm -hmm. Like I'll just hold on to the bone and just go at it, just because it's uh, I don't know, it just makes you feel very primal. <laughs> 20% better nutrient absorption eating like yeah, a yeah, yeah. man. 
Wait, you follow Solbar, right? Yeah, yeah, he's a really interesting guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, he says this thing. He's like, he's like, digestion doesn't start like when you start eating. It starts like with every, like all your senses. Huh. So he's like, that's why like people eat like our ancestors like when they ate food with their hands, like they started digesting already, like based off of just a touch. Huh. Like every sense adds to. Yeah, I don't really understand it. Some of it. He he can be a little like kind of yeah he, yeah, he, yeah he can get a little esoteric at times, but um. I, what I like about him is, I, I definitely think he brings a lot of positivity to this uh, sort of men's self-improvement mm -hmm. corner of the mm -hmm. internet, which uh, sometimes um, can can get a little down. And I, I get it. I get the frustration sometimes where, where you see like what direction like culture is going or academia or the media is going. Like oh, yeah. I, I understand that. Uh, at the same time, though, it's like, well, what are we going to do about it? Are we just going to you know just sit there and do nothing, or can we be a positive force and kind of create our own culture? So. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I want a better world for myself and for my, you know, eventual kids to uh, inherit. Um, I don't know any kids that uh, that I know of, at least. But uh, for, for, know? for, for, <laughs> right? for Not yet. yeah, for for when that time does come, yeah, um, yeah, it's like, well, what other choice do we have but uh, to at least try uh, to make something better? So I, I like that kind of positivity that that he's bringing. Yeah. And and, and honestly, his fitness advice is, is pretty good too. Uh, oh, it's spot on. Yeah. Taught me a lot about uh, kind of natural eating. Mm -hmm. and, and things like that. So re really interesting stuff. He's the guy that put me on a glycine. Dude, same here. Yeah. yeah so when it comes to uh, sleep aids, uh, yeah. a lot of people talk about melatonin. That's kind of the, the popular one. And oh, man. Yeah. I know what you about It helps me a tiny yeah. bit. It helps me a tiny bit. But I really find, especially when like, you have a high stress week, like six grams of glycine, like I'm Chilling. I'm knocked out. Yeah. I'm knocked out. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny you mentioned melatonin because when I went to, so this place I get my supplements at, it's called Herb Mart. Yeah. And... They, it's like literally a. I'm like a kid in a candy store there, mm. so to speak, right? And Brother, so, do, do you want some of this yeah. sauce? It's really good. Um, yeah, I, I'll I'll dip here and yeah, there. Yeah, sure. I don't I don't use too much sauce because gotcha. my gut. Yeah, yeah. I'll dip here and do, there. Do your thing. Yeah, but um, this place are my. I went there and like I was talking to them. I was like, yeah, do you have glycine? And usually glycine's like thirty dollars for like a hundred capsules. Yeah. Right. And uh, usually I break apart the capsules. Each capsule is like one gram, and then I put it in my tea or whatever, right? Yeah. But uh, here they have like a whole thing. It was like. 300 grams for like $13 in powder form, like yeah, pure powder I, form. Yeah, I, I get a powder form yeah. off of bulk supplements. Bulk supplements, right? Okay, cool. I'm just cool. going to plug yeah. myself to <laughs> alxcook.com. Get a 5% discount off your bulk supplements order. Yes, I do get a small kickback from oh, dang. that. But if you want to get, there you want to save a little money when you order in bulk, you know, now it's you know. not like, like glycine is glycine. Everyone has these weird advertisements like, oh, it's the highest quality glycine. Dude, it's, it's all the same. A molecule is a molecule. It's all the same. It's like when people say, oh, it's like the highest quality herb. It's like, dude. Like, Let's be bro, honest. Re really, bro. That's just marketing, bro. It's, it's marketing. Yeah. It's marketing. And that, that's one of the big problems I have with the supplement and uh, nutrition industry. Um, yeah. I'd be kind of curious marketing. to know about your supplementation because I'll be honest, I've been going a lot more minimalist lately. Oh, bro. Just, just, yeah. just focusing a lot more on just mm -hmm. my overall nutrition because, I mean, that that's really the Getting cornerstone food, right there. Getting right? Like holistic, yeah. holistic eating like yeah, you were yeah, mentioning yeah. earlier. So I want to touch on the melatonin thing mm -hmm. and then I'll jump into the like the supplementation. So when I went to Herb Mart to talk about glycine, he's like, what do you use glycine for? And I said, for sleeping, I combine it with magnesium glyconate yep. and um, L-theanine, you know, to relax. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, he yeah. goes, he goes, wow, that's a great stack compared to a lot of people who use melatonin. And I was like, I never really use melatonin. He's like, don't start. And I was like, why? And he said, I'll, he's like, people come in here and they, um, mm -hmm. they get like, they, they get with like the lowest dosage of melatonin like the one gram one or the two gram one yep and then next thing you know in three months they're they have to have like five ten grams because like your yep. body builds like a dependency on it yeah but uh it's weird glycine I, I, I can see that yeah but it's weird glycine doesn't do that because glycine's an amino acid right so like you're consuming it, it anyway yeah you're consuming yeah, anyway you're consuming. yeah yeah so it's great man but glycine plus l-theanine plus magnesium glyconate all in some chamomile tea well the, the magnesium you have to take as a pill but the other two and some chamomile tea at night, dude, gone. I think the big thing for me Deep also, sleep. yeah, yeah. The big thing for me also though is uh, cutting out the screen time mm. uh, before bed because you know a lot of what I do, if it's creating content or even even just reading things interesting, you know, it's in front of my laptop. So one of the nice things about Windows 10 is they have the nightlight feature where it turns off the blue red, light right? on your desktop. Yeah, red light. Um, that helps a little bit, but even then, you know, I'd like to do just something else, like at least have 30 minutes before before I call it a night to just kind of get away from the screen time a little bit, and that, that helps me kind of relax a bit more. I think it's a great idea. This is one thing, like, if you go on, like, YouTube videos and, and search up, like, how to get better sleep, oh, like, so many of the funny comments are... It's 3 a.m. as I read this, yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. like, oh, you're fucking yeah. up already, right. <laughs> you know? Right. But, um, 
Yeah, so let's talk about supplementation. Sure. Those three things I listed out are pretty much the only supplements I take. I don't take any pre or post workout because I can't handle caffeine. And mm. my gut is really sensitive okay. because of my ulcerative colitis. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard for me to handle any, like, pretty much anything that's, like, processed. Okay. So, I mean, I can eat meat all day. I can't really handle sauces too much. I'll do here and there, but, like, I can handle meat all day, fish all day. Do you do any, like, those, like, uh, like non-caffeinated pre-workouts or just uh, do it Nah, just, no, nah, okay. not in general. The only pre-workout I take that's is, is, like, honey, maybe, bro. Like, two spoons of honey before okay. I lift, and I'm just, like, amped. Yeah. You know, I'm not, there's no beta alanine or anything in there. My face isn't itchy, but yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's pretty nice. So yeah, very minimal. Just, um, yeah, mag glycinate, um, glycine, L-theanine, and uh, here and there for like my gut issues, I take like slippery elm and licorice root Okay. here and there, but not, that's like a very minimal thing. What, what about you? What is your, what's your stack? Uh, like? So creatine, fish oil, mm -hmm. just cause oh, the, these are pretty documented. Yep. Uh, I take uh, a general multivitamin. Uh, Bear Performance Nutrition, so mm -hmm. shout out to Nick Bear, Austin guy, uh, former Army guy. Uh, beyond that, though, I, I've been cutting a lot out. So I take uh, a little vitamin A, actually, because mm. I get some adult acne type mm. issues. That okay. helps with that. Vitamin D, just because, I mean, there's, there's a lot of benefits from that. Uh, zinc before bed. And, you know, honestly, there's a lot of stuff I experiment with that just didn't really feel much benefit uh, above and beyond placebo. So in, like, a lot of men's self-improvement things, Mac is someone's talked about a lot. Macaroon, bro. Honestly, That's I never fine. really felt much of benefit. Mm. Maybe some people did. For me, it, it just wasn't really move the needle. Or sometimes I just feel kind of like jittery. What's it supposed a bit. to do? Uh, it's supposed to kind of like you know up boost energy a little bit. Mm. And for me, I, I just never really felt that. Mm. Uh, ashwagandha, I do find some kind of benefit uh, before bed. But you know, actually, one of the things that I want to talk about going back to nutrition is one thing that I do feel that has moved the needle. Um, and this is a topic some guys might be interested in. Want to you know, kind of over the age of thirty, get into maybe researching um, TRT therapy because mm. I know that's someone's talked a lot about. Uh, I had my blood work drawn. Right. Uh, my readings, you know, they weren't they weren't horrible, uh, but they weren't necessarily great either. So I had my my test reading was uh, five seven seven. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, clinically that's normal. But I think if you reach this corner of the internet, you realize okay, there, there's a bit more to the story than oh, just that. Oh, like people are yeah, and way off the track. I could also just tell like after the age of thirty, so I'm thirty four now. I did feel this sort of downshift. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. I still feel like I can keep up with the young guys, but right. you know, I, I did feel sort of this downshift. So, uh, gave my labs to uh, trust a trusted doctor that I know through my network. Mm. One of the things that he noticed, he said, uh, you know, your, I don't recall if it's HDL or LDL cholesterol. I'm going to get this mixed up, so I apologize. But my cholesterol level is so low, mm. he doesn't normally see this level except for people that are on statins, which I'm not. Oh, wow. Yeah, so he asked me if I'm on a low fat diet. I'm like, well, no, I'm not on a low fat diet. But I was, inadvertently, not intentionally, I was on a very low saturated fat diet. That was not uh, intentionally, but that's that, kind of Is that because out. of the military? Like the food they eat? Well, so I, I have mine apart. No, so oh, officers, okay, okay, we love off post. We love off post, yeah. Gotcha, but gotcha. Uh, just kind of how I grew up, you know, I'd get the lean ground beef for my pasta. Right. Uh, I'd cook with stuff like olive oil, which is great. Right. Uh, but, you know, he suggested, well, maybe try coconut oil. Maybe try get the yeah. slightly more some higher ghee, fat some content. Some tallow or something like that. Yeah. Cooking, um, yeah. I know a lot of people talk about cooking with butter and stuff like that. I, I, I just never, I'm just not a big butter guy. Dude. Not, not a hater, but butter's like. Butter's amazing. Dude, yeah. I love though coconut oil and duck yeah. fat. Duck fat. Yeah. Oh man, I haven't heard duck fat in so long. I've, yeah. I only know one other person who cooks in duck fat. Yeah, I love yeah. coconut oil and I love duck fat. And nice. you know, I got the slightly higher ground, uh, slightly higher fats, ground beef. Plus just, you know, start eating a bit more coconut just cause I, I like the taste of it. Yeah. And I have felt a bit of a difference. Good man. Uh, so, you know, I haven't had my labs run again though, but just i did feel a little bit of a difference so like honestly look you're, you're gonna go to a nutrition store they're gonna say every kind of magic thing under the world is gonna boost take test this, just but take this booster take this bo like, Here, here's yeah. here's a real way you can tell it's mm. bs though the real way is if it actually did move the needle on your hormones in some significant degree sports leagues would ban it that's true that's 100 percent true yeah. anything that's like a ped or like sarms like yep the SARMs are banned in sports, right? In professional sports? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, there's always kind of like the, the evolutionary arms race where, yeah. you know, they'll, they'll come out with some that just hasn't quite met the U.S. 88 definition Not yet. Right? yet. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like those things, like those those cannabinoids, which, you know, they're legal just because the DEA hasn't made them illegal yet. But, yeah, it's 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 like that, where they're playing that legal loophole game. But yeah. bottom line is it came down to scoring away my nutrition, and that did a lot more for me than just buying – random supplements because some bro online said it was like the cool new thing yeah it all goes back to that holistic yeah. eating and uh 
Uh, we, we talked about this uh, briefly, I think uh, maybe a couple months ago on Instagram. It was like, um, oh, feel free to yep, yep, yep. Yeah, just jump in, man. I, can't, I definitely can't finish all this. Um, saturated fat, cholesterol, and vitamin D are like the three precursors to testosterone mm-hmm. and proper hormone production mm-hmm. in men. And so it, that, that makes complete sense when your doctor said, hey, like, do you eat a low saturated fat diet? Like, that's, yep. a, that's a smart ass doctor yep. who said that, you know? Like, usually most doctors would be like, oh, you're no, like, my doctor told me I was normal at 319 NG per DL. And I was like, are you kidding? That's normal if you're like 70 like, or 80 years old. Yeah, bro, that's like yeah. if my, my grandpa, right? right? And I was like, I was like, dude, like, I haven't been able to put on muscle like yeah, so I, in I, a hot minute. Like, let me, like, can you get me on something? Yeah, and he's like, l- l- let me actually shadow this guy, Dr. Philip Ovedia. Mm. Uh, he's got a big online telemedicine thing. Mm. So, you know, there's been a lot of really misinformation about saturated fat and heart health. And a lot of it is total misinformation. Mm. This guy is a cardiac surgeon. He, he's a cardiac He knows surgeon. intimately about right. the cardiovascular system. Right. And he is saying this. Wow. So check out his stuff. He's big on Twitter. He's starting to get on Instagram a little bit. But Dr. Philip Ovedia, really smart Philip guy. Ovedia. And he has a telehealth kind of clinic, too, if you want him to take a look at your labs as well. Nice. Yeah, like some of these doctors on Twitter, bro, I've learned more from just reading their tweets than I have. Yeah. Like like uh, Dr. Tro. Uh, not for you. Know um, yeah. Who else is there? This guy's not a doctor, but like P.D. Mangan. You know what it is? Uh, not, not. Dang, okay. Yeah. I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think who, who else is in that corner. They, they just kind of get retweeted by some of the people I follow every so often. So I'm just like, I'm like, man, this guy's. Are... Well, yeah. Look, I, I'm not trying sense. to like just totally bash on the medical establishment here, but you know, looking for a doctor, it's like looking for a lawyer, or looking like a personal trainer. Oh yeah. They all kind of have their goals, and you, um, you know, some might have a specialty in one field, but mm-hmm. you know, for example, like let's say you're a really awesome, I don't know, dermatologist. Mm. Yeah. Okay, you're a doctor, but. You know, there, there's domain specificity to this knowledge. Right. Maybe you're a great orthopedic surgeon or you're a great physical therapist, but you know, there, there's domain specificity to this knowledge. Agreed. So the nice thing now about the internet and social media is you're able to kind of fit, find out a bit more what is this person's uh, you know field of specialty, their background. Yeah. Mm. Speaking of background, you're a finance guy. Yep. <laughs> so I, I kind of had a really interesting career path. So yeah. I. Uh, I worked in the financial service industry for about mm-hmm. seven years, uh, private wealth management, and then a mid-office risk for a company here in Dallas. Uh, I was helping them out with their energy trading. Okay. And then I joined the United States Army uh, through Officer Candidate School, uh, made to the rank of captain. Nice. Yep. Okay. So I was, uh, I had a number of jobs. So first job is I was a platoon leader for our combat medics. Uh, then I was a platoon leader for our uh, combat engineers, 12 Bravo. So I'm an engineer officer by trade, so that's mm-hmm. my specialty. I was a company executive officer for a headquarters company. And then my last job there is our, I was our uh, uh, battalion, or we call it a squadron, uh, mm. our squadron plans officer. So just recently got out and uh, gonna be going to business school next. But yeah, I've, I've, I've done a number of things in my career. Yeah. I've done a number of things. And one of the things I talked about on YouTube a little bit is why I made that big move. And in fairness, I also gave the other side of the story on you know why I decided to, to get out as well. But it's, it's been an amazing ride. You know, learned a lot about leadership. Made some, you know, really lifelong friends from this. 100%. But like brothers, right? Like yeah, 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 legit. absolutely. Yeah. Like definitely some lifelong friends that I want to stay in touch with. Uh, one of them, she actually came down for my uh, getting out of the military party, uh, kind of my going away party. So yeah, definitely made some people I stayed in touch with for a long time. But going to be going to, back to finance uh, after business school. Nice. And you went to business school in? I'm going to uh, Vanderbilt University, Tennessee, right? Yep. Uh, right in Nashville. So, Nashville, right, right. Yep. Good old Vandy. I seen your uh, I seen your Instagram post about like how uh, Tennessee compares to like Austin, Miami, like Vegas, like the nightlife and the culture there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um. Yeah. You know, Nashville. It's you can definitely tell it's it's a growing city. It is still a smaller city, but uh, it has all the right stuff to it. Okay. Uh, my kind of advice, if you're touring the area, is you know you're obviously a Texas guy. You're familiar with Austin. Yep. Uh, but kind of to compare to Austin, so everyone will talk about Broadway when you go to Nashville. That's like the main Go there to check okay. the box. Yeah. Broadway is dirty six. Oh. Go there to check the box yep, to yep, say yep. you did. Okay, okay. And then after that, then you actually go out to Midtown or the Gulch. Midtown's like rainy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Domain, Mid- yeah, area. Yeah, exactly, okay. exactly. So uh, that or the Gulch, uh, which is kind of a bit more upscale. It's going to be less ratchet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Got to have that. Got to have that. I definitely going to add Tennessee to the list of, uh, of places. I definitely, I've been planning to travel in the U.S., you know, here, here in a little bit, yeah, um, and kind of just making a list. I've been to, you know, been to Florida and like New Mexico, California, and those places. But I haven't really been to like 
I've never been to Tennessee. My parents have been to Tennessee. Okay. I've never been to Tennessee, so I got to check that out. But, yeah, uh, I yeah. drove through it briefly in 2017, but the first time I really spent time there is yeah. uh, I was visiting it a couple months ago just to make sure I wasn't making like some horrific decision going <laughs> right? to Vanderbilt. And uh, I confirmed that this this will be good. I, Nash, Nashville is a, is a really vibrant city. Nice. Okay. Cool, cool. Um, so business school, that means you're going to get your MBA? Mm-hmm. Sick. So, yeah, about that, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily think anyone necessarily needs an MBA per se, um, mm-hmm. or nowadays, they don't even necessarily need a college degree, but I, I think depending on what you're looking for, it can open up certain doors. If you have, if you have a specific reason why you're going in, it can, it can definitely add value. Uh, what I am looking for is I am transitioning out of the military, right. and I'm looking to step on the gas with my network. Mm-hmm. So it is two mm-hmm. years... It's two years to do that, to aggressively build my network wow, and you know, also learn a thing or two in the process as well. I kind of have that university career services behind you. And the really nice thing is the GI Bill is picking it up. Taking it up? Oh, yeah, that's so. cool. That's cool. Yeah. Nice. Man, that's awesome. Definitely want to thank you for your service. Thank you. In the military, yeah. of thank course. You. What uh, what inspired that? Like, you know, you were in financial services, sure. then you went to the military, now you're going back to the business yeah. world. What, so, what was that initial... Yeah, I, I, I talked about this on, on my YouTube, but uh, you know, the short story is an itch that just wasn't going away. Now, I met mm. with uh, recruiters all the way back in high school. Mm-hmm. Um, didn't pull the trigger then. Uh, in hindsight, yeah, I should have pulled the trigger at, at an earlier age. And, and I even said that during my uh, interview uh, for me getting into OCS. Mm. Uh, they asked, you know, why now? Why not sooner? I was like, look, in hindsight, yeah, I should have done it sooner. And because one of the things I felt like I missed out on, so I never actually had a deployment. Oh, I felt okay. that's something that I missed out on. You think you would so, have that if you joined the earlier? Oh, absolutely. Back absolutely. then, everybody okay. was deploying. Oh, like, wow. the National Guard was deploying, the reserves mm. were going, everybody. Everybody was going back then. So, you know, live and you learn. True. And uh, honestly, that's a big pre- uh, part of the reason why why people are getting out, because uh, you know, those, those opportunities are, are kind of drying up. You know? mm. So, a lot of people, I think probably myself included, they want to feel like they're doing something. Right. Um, you know, I think the military attracts a crowd that uh, they don't want to just watch things happen on TV, but they want to, uh, you know, they they want to be part of something. They want to make things so, happen. Yeah, nice. exactly, exactly. That was like that, you were talking about that itch that you had, it was just you wanted to like be a part of something bigger. Yeah, of. and you know, the, things like foreign policy, defense issues, they're, they're always something that that uh, just really has been an interest of mine, uh, nice. even as a kid. So just that, that itch wasn't going away. Uh, there are some personal things just from, you know, things that I was kind of going through in life and uh, that, that I thought I'd, that the military would help me with, but it, it was a great move. The, the reason why I'm getting out, though, is, um, you know, I am leaving some things on the table. I think there is some more cool things that I could have done in the military, but right. a lot of it comes down to just what I want to do in the business world. It makes sense for me to do this now rather than later. Right. And if I really miss it, I can still do the National Guard or something like that and have mm. it be a part-time okay. thing. But where I'm kind of at career-wise and personally in life right now, it just makes sense for me to transition out of active duty at this time. That makes sense? Yeah. Yeah. What's the... Uh, what's the the age limit's like 36, right? Before you can go back, or um, is it once you're once you're done, you're done type of thing? No, not necessarily. Uh, to originally get in, um, there are some limits, but they can be waived. Right. So I, I had some older people in my uh, bullet class, base officer uh, leadership class, uh, and there, the the most important thing is you can physically keep up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So there, there and are waivers. Yeah, there, there are waivers for for a number of these things. That makes sense. So next step for you, been in school for two years to yep. make to establish connections. Mm-hmm. Is that like people in the business school that you think like you're like all right, if I get to know these people now, in five to ten years they're going to be off doing their things, I'm going to be off doing my thing. Maybe we can collab in the future type of thing. That's a big part of it. Mm-hmm. Also the alumni network mm. that I'd be in touch with. Of Vanderbilt, yeah. Yep. And also just using it as a launch pad to uh, you know, have time and space to reach out to, to companies, to just people of interest, uh, uh, events or groups, NGOs around town, whatever the case may be. Because that can be hard to do when you have a full-time job. Mm. And in this case, well, not that it's impossible. It's just hard. It's just tougher. It's an additional responsibility. Yeah. Whereas now, this is the main goal. Mm. And yes, there are classes. There is group work. But to what end, though? So we could all have this final goal. Right. So true, true, true. I like that. So tell me what uh, over the next six to twelve months, and this can be about anything. Mm-hmm. It can be about a specific. It could be about you can name off a ticker symbol for anything. You hmm. can name off like something yeah, yeah, in your yeah, life. Yeah. You can name yeah. off 
something like I don't know that's like just something for humanity what are you bullish on in the, for the next 12 months sure okay yeah. so first full disclosure as I always say on my YouTube channel this is not investment advice and I'm not just saying yeah. that because it's like a cool new thing but yeah. no z no, zero this is not yeah. don't take so, this don't take that the, as the reason why I say that because you know we're, we're all adults here so I, I, I want to you know I, I'm assuming an intelligent audience I'm not saying this to patronize you guys just mm. I don't know who's watching this so I don't right. know what is suitable for you or not I don't know what's within your risk tolerance so this is just for informational purposes I'm just speaking on my behalf and then you know figure out for yourself what might make sense from a right. risk perspective if what I'm talking about maybe a small portion a big portion or maybe not at all I'll leave that up to you so I'm, I'm just gonna give you some information and you guys are all grown adults so you can, you heard you can that. figure out what, what to do with that from there you heard that here don't take this as advice this yeah. is just Alex's thoughts and opinions right so and, and, and as always do your own research and it, you know so I, a lot of what I've been talking about on YouTube lately is uh, cryptocurrency yeah and I've seen those I've seen that yeah so my opinion on this changed a lot in 2017 that made me realize that this is not just a flash in the pan that this trend is not going to go away mm -hmm. and if anything it's only going to get bigger now not necessarily any one crypto in particular although I kind of have some thoughts on that but the whole <laughs> blockchain right. technology yeah is going to keep advancing right. so people say hey what if a better Bitcoin comes along I'm like great cool great yeah Th then then you can do that what if right. a better theorem comes around great is the, the the question that I would have people consider right is just look at a graph you can look up Federal Reserve economic data Fred on the m2 money supply it's gone straight up. yeah now seen that money supply consists of two components one is a monetary base meaning how much money have we for lack of better terms printed and the second is money velocity so mm. The thing to consider with money is money is not like atomic particles. A dollar can exist in two places at the same time. That, that, that's, that's a little mindset. That's, that's what the bank. That's what the banking system is, right? Fractional reserve banking. Yeah, yeah. you deposit so, a dollar. Yep. It gets put in your bank account as an electronic dollar, but then the bank loans it out, so it can be somewhere else. Exactly. Yeah. So that is one thing that you know. It, it, it gets a little weird because you're thinking of it in terms of like atomic particles or matter, like what just. It, it's not mentally intuitive. Right. So it is a bit of a trip, but that money velocity so that's what we call the money velocity how much this money loans out that has obviously been down because of the COVID induced recession right uh, because everything's been locked down but right. businesses were forced to shut well, we're coming out of that now mm -hmm. but all this money has been printed so velocity is now going to go up right the money supply which is a multiple of monetary base times velocity money equals money supply right that thing is going to go ballistic oh wow and the okay. whole idea that the Fed can hike interest rates in 2023 meaning two years from now and get it under control I think that's delusional. Mm. I think that is delusional because one thing to keep in mind too, it's not just the US Fed. It's easy to blame the Fed. It's, oh, it's European Central Bank. All throughout every, it's Japanese every nation. Central Bank. Yep. Everybody yep. is doing this. Yep. It's been a race to see who can print the fastest. So because of that, that is why I am on bullish on crypto long term as in 10 years, 10 plus years, any individual coin might go up and down. It's mm. a very volatile market. But what I would suggest though is as this market continues to get bigger, the volatility might smooth out. What I mean by that, is right now it's between what like one to two trillion roughly which, yeah I mean it's still about, a lot of money that's a lot yeah uh, that is maybe roughly the uh, the market value of Apple one company yep how many companies in the S&P 500 500, 500. <laughs> yeah and that's just one component of the US stock market right which is a sub component of the whole world stock, stock market, market yep which is still small compared to the whole bond market so in institutional money terms one or two trillion that's still not very big. We haven't even talked about commodities or real estate or other things that this people put like money in. Infancy stages. Yeah. yeah. So I look. I know that you wish you got into Bitcoin like in 2010, yeah. 2011. But when you think of it in terms of institutional money terms, there's still room to run. A lot of this is still retail money. What I mean by that is people were literally buying Dogecoin because Elon Musk told them to. Because he was tweeting. Now, I'm not making any opinion mm. like one way, like good, bad on, on Dogecoin, because again, it's not financial advice, but you know, Doge, it doesn't really fit into my uh, investment style. It's not a hater comment. It just right. doesn't fit into my style. Yeah. Either fair. way, though, yeah. it's like this coin is moving literally because Elon Musk told him to. Yep. Okay. Institutional money, meaning pension funds, university endowments. We're talking billions and trillions of dollars. Right. They're not investing like this. They yeah. are doing some serious due diligence, and a lot of them are really behind the power curve when it comes to crypto. Agreed. So yep. I. Um, the way I know this is I hopped on a conference call with uh, the CFA Society of Dallas-Fort Worth. Mm. Uh, this was a couple months ago where they had a, a crypto-based hedge fund. Talked to them about the merits of crypto. And the audience are some really serious financial professionals. They're at really legit firms. Yeah. And they were asking some very basic questions about crypto still. Right. Some things that have been long since debunked. Like they're asked questions like, hey, since Bitcoin is anonymous, 
can't, you know, blah, 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 blah. They're asking, like, hey, will the oh, government crack down? Bitcoin yeah, is yeah. not anonymous yeah. at all. This has been completely debunked. That's been debunked, yep. Like, people that have been trying to use this for, like, illegal activities or tax evasion, like, they've gone to jail. Yeah. Because Bitcoin, no, Bitcoin There's is not AM anonymous AML. at all. There's a whole AML for anti-money laundering for Bitcoin. Well, Bitcoin transactions right. are very easy to trace because mm. everything is public on the blockchain. Now, right. since then, there are new privacy coins that try to obscure, uh, try to obscure the, 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 the proof of ownership on the blockchain to, to make it more private. Yeah. Bitcoin, these transactions are very, very traceable. Wow. And the feds have gotten very, very good at tracing it. So point being is, so that, that's one kind of random example, but the point is smart money is still learning this stuff. Yep. So I think we're still early on in, in the adoption cycle. But what really got me into crypto, so I made some videos on Chainlink. Dude, when it was at like three dollars, right? Uh, or like a dollar eighty or something like that. that like a dollar yeah. eighty, right? Yeah. I remember that. That was like two years ago. Uh, Maybe a I, year. I think I started talking about it in 2017 and yeah. I talked a bit more in 2018. Yeah. So do the math on the price since then. But yeah. what got me interested in it, it not even necessarily what I just mentioned about the Fed printing money, but this got me interested in it as far as applications it could have for real world businesses. So the job I had in Dallas before I joined the military, mm. I was working for a company at the time, it was called Energy Future Holdings. Now it's called Vista Energy. Mm. I was helping to deal with their energy trading. A lot of this uh, are, are done through what are called over-the-counter derivatives, mm. meaning they're contracts that we have with other energy companies like Exxon, Chevron, whoever, uh, on these you know specific energy type products. Like, right. hey, we agree that we will purchase electrical power or natural gas, or bread and butter was trading power and gas right. at XYZ price. Dude, we were literally faxing some of these contracts. This no is the year way. 2015. Y'all are faxing stuff? We're using fax machines. Like, are you kidding me? They were using, I, I kid you not, they were using AOL Instant Messenger. No way. I didn't even in know that still existed. I thought AIM got disbanded in like, like but They eventually pulled the plug on it, but I yeah. was amazed this thing even still existed. The wow. point is, there are a lot of very, very legacy, uh, legacy players in the space that... Wow. What I think smart contracts could do, and I'll talk about that a little bit for those not familiar. I think smart contracts could automate all this and streamline a lot of this. Yep. So what a smart contract is, it is a self-executing legal agreement that exists on the blockchain. Right. The easy way I explain it to people is let's think in terms of sports betting. Mm. So if I'm gonna bet on the Phoenix Suns that they're gonna beat the Clippers, mm. uh, this could be a contract that exists in cyberspace on right. the Ethereum blockchain. And then Ethereum or you know whatever system is running it, they will see it, they will see that the Suns won, they'll pay out my contract. Right. Now. Here's where Chainlink comes into play, is we need good data to make sure that the smart contract triggers correctly. Oh, okay, okay. So what Chainlink yeah. does is it validates the data that goes mm. into these smart contracts. Because let's say uh, the smart contract, it's pointing to an API that is pulling data from, let's say, ESPN.com right. to give me the score. Well, let's say someone at ESPN, they just type in the wrong number. Well, the contract is still going to trigger. And remember, all this on the blockchain is immutable. Once it's triggered, it's, it's done. done yeah. There's no going There's back. There's no going back. So, yeah. like, the flaw is kind of part of the feature. This means the government can't shut it down either. Right. Which is good. It means it's censorship proof, censorship right. resistant. But the trigger is, we, or the, the, the catch is, we need to have good data to go into these contracts and make sure that'll trigger correctly. So, that's where Chainlink comes to play. Right. So, let's not even say they type in the wrong number or unintentionally. Let's say they type it in intentionally for straight up oh, fraud, right, right, right. which has happened when the whole LIBOR rigging scandal, if you remember that, happened a few uh, years ago. With uh, So what LIBOR is, it is an interest rate reference rate that a lot of uh, fixed income products trade off of. Now I'm getting like super technical here. Yeah, yeah, no, ordinary I, people, I'm keeping yeah, up, yeah, yeah. Ordinary yeah. people will never need to deal with LIBOR at all, okay. but large banks, oh yeah, they deal with that every day. Mm. That is a huge market. So this is a very esoteric product, but the point right. is, uh, there's these reference rates, reference indexes that these uh, um, over-the-counter derivatives need reliable information for. Them. So right. I saw the need when it came to energy trading, right? Because in a way, it's kind of a cartel. Uh, if I, if you ask what what is the price of crude oil, yeah. While well, the price in the news, it is one specific type of crude oil called West Texas Intermediate, at one specific location, which is Cushing Hub, which is in Oklahoma. And that's what the news says. Yeah. Like now, that, yeah. Just because that's a common reference rate. Right. Now, what if I need oil somewhere else? What if I have mm. an oil that is something other than WTI? It's Arab light, or right. it's um, Brent's North Sea, w w right. different grades of oil. Yeah. Well, some of this, yeah, yeah. So some of this, it, it's it's really a cartel. It's uh, there's this one company called Platts that publishes it for an arm and a leg. Yeah. What if we could put some of this on the blockchain? Because what it is, Platts is the trusted player. So for natural gas trading, it's big. If you know natural gas, you see the price that's at uh, Henry Hub in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. What if I need natural gas right here? Intent because my yeah. hotel is right yeah. here. Dallas, my Texas, power yeah. plant is right here. Right. So that's where Platts comes into play. They take in all the traders, they aggregate their information, and they spit it out for a huge subscription fee. Oh. What if we put this all in the blockchain, cut right. out the middleman, have Chainlink validate it, and have a smart contract automate the whole thing? 
then everything gets done in seconds instead of and, and there's and less for a whole lot cheaper. Yeah, the less pain for a whole yeah, lot yeah, cheaper. Sure. And honestly, regulators would like this a lot more because after 2008, regulators were begging and pleading for swaps traders to, to uh, trade their swaps on exchanges to make things more transparent, so we could see what kind of risk banks were taking. Mm. This kind of sort of happened, not really. Uh, I can do a whole spiel on how Dodd Frank didn't really reform banks, but point being is, so this would achieve the same effect. Right. Now the swaps they would not be traded on exchanges but they would be traded on the blockchain. So it would still be transparent, it would still be out in the open, and you could take a look at the blockchain and see you know, what bank, what energy company, who's taking what risk. And I think this would give you transparency, this would cut out a lot of the middleman fees, mm. this would make the markets a whole lot more efficient. So that's what got me into Chainlink around that time, because nice. I realized, look, we're not here yet, yeah. but this is where things this are going. This is where Chainlink is pushing towards. This is where yeah. things are going, and I don't see this trend stopping anytime soon. Right. A great documentary you should check out is Floored. So you can see it on YouTube. Florida? Florida. F -O Florida. Like, okay. So it, it refers to the floor traders on the Chicago market ah, exchange. Okay, so you okay. remember like those famous old Wall Street movies, the guys in a trading floor, they're all yelling like, at yeah, each other, yeah. and you know, they're yep. in the funny colored jackets, like yep. yelling at each other on exchange? Yeah. 1997, the whole game changed. This is when the CME started doing electronic trading. Mm, okay. Overnight, a bunch of these jobs disappeared. Went away. Yeah, because nobody's doing like brokerage. You don't need bro to. Yeah, nobody's doing you don't brokerage need to. stuff like. And in fact, front, look, uh, when uh, yeah. when COVID kicked off and the New York Stock Exchange closed its floor, nothing happened. Oh, like Charles all the Schwab, trading is e -trade, yeah, like all yeah. the trading is electronic, even between institutions. In fact, yeah. a lot of them bypass the exchanges entirely. Trade directly oh, they trade with, with each other. other. Yep, it's called dark liquidity. Oh, oh yeah, that's what dark liquidity. pools are, right? Yep, it's what dark pools are. I've seen, I've seen an article about that, about dark pools. You and could like, yep. just probably turn off the whole lights, the New York Stock Exchange, and nothing would happen. And we wow. know that because in COVID, that did happen. That happened. And things things ran just fine. Dude, so a lot this of trend is not going yeah, away. A lot of things happened during COVID that every, everything else, everything that you would think would kind of the world would shut off, Yep, it didn't. I think what COVID did is COVID accelerated a lot of trends that were in motion anyways, yeah. but it massively accelerated them. So uh, in some ways, look, obviously there's a lot of pain. Uh, I definitely feel bad for a lot of the small businesses that uh, really got screwed. And in fact, it, this kind of changed my thinking on, on a number of things and you know, not to get on my soapbox too much, but uh, uh, one possible, you know, if I can get something other than uh, from Amazon, you know, I, I like to at least try to, and I'd, I'd rather shop from a local small business rather than someone yep. that's been profiting hand over fist uh, as a result of yeah. uh, of the lockdowns. I'd rather see if I could uh, maybe shop a bit more locally. So that, that kind of changed my thinking on a number of these ends. Now, here's the good news, because I think it's very easy to get sucked in bad news a little bit. The good news is one of the great things that came out of COVID is work from home. Oh yeah, work from 100%. home. Yeah, so yep. a great book that came out in either 97 or 98, point is uh, late 90s. And this book is way ahead of its time. It's the Sovereign Individual. Oh, I'm gonna write that down. I have that. Yeah. I have that. I know. I know that book. Yep. I'm gonna write it down anyway. Um, the Sovereign Individual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people on that side of Twitter talk about it, like quite a lot. Especially Bo Type Bull. He. Yep. That, that's like that's like the phrase. That's like the phrase. The key phrase he uses a lot. So this book, I'm gonna nitpick a little bit, but just so it's said. They had a couple bad calls, like Y2K was nowhere a bigger deal as they thought. Mm. That's nitpicking though. The book though is like phenomenally ahead of its time. It talked about crypto. They called it something else. They called it like digital money or something like digital that. Digital currency, is, right? Yeah. This is like the early 90s. Right. We don't even have high speed internet yet. Right. We have like infancy stage. Yeah. So one of the things they talked about, and I think it's definitely going to happen, is we're going to get a place where cities are going to have to compete for people. Mm. And I definitely think that's a good thing for as far as personal liberty and better governance. Because for a long time, you had a couple cities, uh, New York, San Francisco, LA, Chicago, they had a monopoly on the high paying professional jobs. Right. They were because like the hub. Of, yeah, because yeah. of that, they didn't necessarily have to run themselves in the best manner. Right. Nowadays, you can work wherever you want now. Yep. And this trend is just going to keep accelerating and it's, it's not going to go away. Yeah. You can collaborate with anyone across the world. And uh, look, if, if a city is not treating well, if they're not able to provide basic services, you can get on the next flight to Dallas, next flight to Miami, next flight to Vegas. And I think this is gonna force uh, localities to be more responsive uh, to the needs of their people. So what I'd yeah. say is, look, yeah, 2020 sucked, but this massively accelerated a lot of trends that are in motion. And I really think it's like ambitious people on this corner of the internet that we really have an opportunity to kind of shape a new culture and build institutions that could last uh, the test of time because 
look, they're not going to get it from mass media or from um, you know the the kind of consumers and that a lot of business are pushing. So they're not going to get it from the mainstream. That's right. for damn right. sure. If so, you're doing what everyone else is doing, you're fucking up. Mm-hmm. Like you gotta sovereign individual. You gotta kind of do your own thing, kind of break away from the pack. Yep. And uh, if you're yeah, an, that's that's if you're performing any kind of job right now where you're more or less a middleman. I'd say uh, it's time to start learning some new skills. Mm. And I'm, I'm just saying that as a, I, I, I see that with love and with genuine empathy, but realize that your job could get automated by an AI. Real quick. So let's get ahead of the curve. Let's do that before it happens so that when, if and when that time does come, you'll be okay. Mm. What, uh, what skills would you recommend? So right now I work, I work a sales job. I have an entry level sales job. Uh, sales is never going to go like, away. Yeah, it's sales, yeah, like, exactly, right? Sales is people skills. Agreed, yeah. Sales and that's, people that's, skills. That's yeah. something that you can't really learn in school. Yep. It's like application and on-the-job experience. What are some other skills that you would recommend to uh, that people stock up on now before sure. they, well, they are in that? So sales is never going to go away. But I would say, because look, I'm, I'm learning this stuff myself. I'm about to launch a new career. But one great thing I got from Bowtie Bull back when they were Wall Street Playboys is... Shout every, out Wall Street Playboys. Yeah, big shout out. So I'd say think in terms of... What is something you could do that you could print out on just a sheet of paper, you could post that around town on like a bulletin board at your local college campus, and you could start generating money off of that. Mm. If you don't have something that fits that description, there's work to be done. Mm. So that's kind of big realization it's a great way for me. Of about like it. I put a lot of work in getting the CFA charter, uh, right. that stands for Chartered Financial Analyst uh, yeah. designation. That's great, but that, that is kind of niche. Like I can't just start CFA. Right. Whereas, let's say I had a CPA, Certified Public Accountant, oh, that's my um, dad is. I could start yeah. doing someone's taxes. Someone's on sale. If I pass yeah. the bar, I could probably do some legal work for them. Right. Uh, if I'm a doctor, obviously I could practice medicine. Right. How do you really practice finance? But mm. here's another way I look at it though, is I had a really good, almost you could say liberal arts education in business and finance. So I could do a good job maybe evaluating what investment opportunities might make sense or not. Uh, okay. Either in terms of for myself, for others, or early stage kind of investments like Chainlink that I can maybe produce content talking about. Yeah. So it does sometimes take some yep. second and third order thinking. Yeah. Uh, but I would think in terms of that, like what skills do you have that you can just print out on a sheet of paper, post it around town, and start generating revenue off of that? Mm. And if if nothing quite fits the bill, like that, that's fine. But let, let's think of something. Like saying, hey, I can, if you need this done, I can do this, this, and yeah. this. And then you leave your phone number and someone be like, hey, I need this done for me. Like that type of thing, right? That, that's, that's, yes. the, that's the analogy that. That's the analogy. Used, right? And look, obviously you can do bigger things like that. Right. Like, you know, enterprise sales is that at a very high level. Like, right. you know, Boeing is not selling their 737 jets on yeah. those flyers to like American yeah. Airlines. But right. that is sort of the analogy to think of it at originally initial level that you could eventually then scale up. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. But sales, sales is never going to go away. Sales is yeah. never going to go away. Yeah, man, I love it. I, I enjoy it. I mean, right now I just do like outbound cold prospecting. Yep. But man, it's it's amazing whenever a meeting comes through. And uh, I mean, I don't see any of that commission, but it's just it's just wonderful to like. I feel like you're very process oriented as well, mm-hmm. you know, and just like just doing something over and over again and trying to like tweak it to the point where somebody responds yes to an email that you personalize that you've yeah. like. Kind of put it's kind of like it's kind of like solving like putting a piece in a puzzle like kind of putting different pieces in a puzzle and it's like oh i finally got this piece all right now let me do the next piece like yeah. you know it's just it's kind of never ends but uh but it's a fun it's a fun thing to do and it's like not a lot of people can do it so that's why sales will be a, a high value skill yeah i would say also just realize there's probably going to be a lot of economic disruption next uh i'd say the next decade or so with work from home with cryptocurrency uh, with, with people moving around to uh, to other localities, so that could be an opportunity for a lot of disruption. Meaning, some legacy companies might have some trouble, but that means new opportunities be coming up too. True. So I'd just say, you know, stay informed. Uh, when it comes to things like crypto, it's a controversial topic. You're going to have a number of characters voicing their opinion. There are going to some who say it's all a scam, it's all hype. Yeah. Granted, okay. You're also going to have some that drink the Kool Aid a bit too much. Yeah. And these would be kind of like the gold bugs when it comes to gold, where. The market could be up, down, whatever, recession, bull market, whatever. They're going to say everything's falling apart by gold. So a lot of them miss out on a lot of bull runs mm. because of that. Now, they did well during the bad times, sometimes. But what this really takes is some level-headed thinking. You can't look at the world as you want it to be. you got to look at the world as it as actually it is. is. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Like, in sure, like, it's something like your politics or religion or whatever. Sure, like, advocate whatever belief you want. But when it comes to money, you got to be objective. you got to be objective. Wow. 
how do you how do you remain objective about money even <laughs> during even during bear cycles? I mean, I wouldn't yeah. call I wouldn't call what we're going through right now with crypto a bear cycle. Uh, I've heard it called you know the, the white off cycle. Yep. Um, but I, th I think the macro yeah. trend is still up. Think? But yeah. how I look at it is uh, part of it just comes to experience. Like, look, I only look young, uh, but uh, I have the gray hairs to prove otherwise. This is the third. <laughs> This is the third recession now that I've had personal money in the market. Oh, wow. So I, I've seen a little bit. The first one was uh, the NASDAQ uh, bubble in 9-11 um, in, in after 2000, 2001. I was in high school then, but that's when I bought uh, stock for the very first time. Mm. Saw 2008 and then saw this. So, you know, you after a while, you've been around you, the block. You, you, you've seen things happen once yeah. or twice. So I, I'd say really one of the best things to study is, is history, mm. is realize these things happen. So if I make a statement, like I did make a statement, in 2019 when we had this phenomenon called yield curve inversion mm. which is a very high chance of a recession and okay. i could talk about the phenomenon a little bit if you're interested yeah, go but for it. uh when i saw that i made a youtube video talking about it now yeah. whenever i make a comment like this you have some people saying like everything's going to crash it's going to be the great depression no like these things happen right. recessions are never pleasant but every about eight to ten years these things happen it's going to be there's going to be a, a bit of a dip things go up yeah, and down and the only way to fix that is to fundamentally change uh, human behavior, fear and greed. And well, we got 5,000 years of human history that say otherwise. That say that won't like, happen. We yeah. haven't even solved the problem of world peace yet. So, you yeah. know, we got, could I fix the world overnight? No. no <laughs> so what I'm going to do is yeah. I'm, I'm going to do what I can. Yeah. I'm going to do what I can make sure that my family, my friends are taken care of and I'm going to do my part and that's all you can do. Yeah. Uh, the yield curve inversion. So th this, this is actually really interesting. And it's, there's a lot of noise, but there's this one thing that is a very strong signal. And you know, money talks, BS walks. So what the yield curve is, is if we were to graph interest rates, uh, meaning 10-year bonds down to you know one-month bonds up to 30-year bonds, if we were to graph what that looks like, because interest rates on the shorter term they're lower than on on the longer term. Mm. That makes intuitive sense because over a longer time horizon, more weird things can happen. Right. Like you've probably seen this taking out a mortgage. Like a 15-year mortgage is going to have a lower APR than a 30-year mortgage. Right. Because over a longer time horizon, who knows? Maybe we have an alien invasion, like the Martians come and attack us. Yeah. Maybe an asteroid hits, whatever. Yeah. More uncertainty can happen over the long term than the short term. Right. So normally, this yield curve, they call it a curve because it forms kind of a line of curve. Okay. It's sloping up. Mm. Is, it, is it like a bell curve? Or uh, no, it's uh, it just it's more it's it's a it's a diagonal line. Oh, that okay, mostly okay. Goes oh, like out. a linear. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Cool, cool, cool. It, it's shaped a little bit. Yeah. Point is, it, it's a di normally under normal conditions, it's more or less a diagonal line up, where the longer, uh, longer term portion is higher yield than the shorter portion. Right. When the yield curve inverts, that means there are short term rates that mm. actually have higher interest rates than long term rates. Wow. That means something is very wrong is happening. Agreed. What it means is the market is pricing in more risk or in the short term, the short -term than, than the long term. The this is a very strong indication that mm. someone's about to go down. And usually when this happens too, all the experts get on TV and say, oh, this time it's not a big deal. This is when you know this is going to be a big deal because these guys deal. are full of it. They're often right. talking their own books. They're trying to right. say this to exit their own positions. Mm. So when the yield curve inverts, this is like a no BS way that the market is telling you, hey, not only do we think something's going on, but we are actively selling our positions in this time frame wow. to get out. Because so, you know, yeah. bonds are not just magic money. Like of course. a bond interest rate means, yeah. well, in, a bond interest rate is a function of its price and its coupon yield. So it, for it to have a certain rate, that means people are buying and selling to, to get it there. Right. So this means people decide to sell off this much on a short term because they're pricing in more risk there than the long term. Wow. That is very unusual. I know we went super technical on that. No, 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 I but understood yeah, that. Bear that, with that me because so this so, is a very no BS yeah. indicator when a recession happens. Right. So the number I look at, it's called the 10-2 spread, uh -huh. meaning take the 10-year treasury, subtract the rate from the two-year treasury. Okay. Uh, when that number goes negative, this is this is for bonds, ten-year bonds yeah, yeah, yeah. versus two-year bonds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when that number goes negative, meaning yeah. the ten-year is now having a lower interest rate than the two-year, red flag, huge red flag. That probably wow. twelve to eighteen months from now, we're we're gonna someone's gonna hit the fan. Dang. Yeah. So how long ago did that happen? This uh, time around? March twenty nineteen. I remember that because oh, I was down okay. at uh, Port Arthur uh, doing a special mission for the military, uh, I was helping to redeploy some stuff that was coming back from uh, Iraq, helping to get back to Fort Hood. Right. I remember I, I made a quick little thing on that when, when I was down there, and uh, sure enough, uh, well, I don't think any of us expected COVID. Yeah. But that was about the time frame. Twelve months later. Wow. Yeah. So. Oh, and that was the. Uh, well, I don't think okay, the market okay. priced in COVID. I'll, I'll be right. fair on that. But I do think we're going to have a recession no matter what. Even if it wasn't for COVID, COVID might just accelerate the time frame. Mm. Because at this time, let's remember, like, what was dumb money going into? Things like WeWork. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, much, yeah. That, so much that worked dumb, out yeah. so well. <laughs> so much money just going into horrible yeah. ideas. Like right. some latest and greatest next new Tinder clone or next yeah. new Instagram clone. Like there wasn't a lot of value really being created. Right. It was just like kind of copy, like ideas that, have, that were being copied and tried to be more perfected, mm -hmm. but they weren't. They were the same old bullshit. Yes. And yeah. these things happen when you're at the top of markets. Mm. These things happen when you're at the top of markets. Unoriginality. Yeah. yeah like think, lack of, yeah, lack of originality. Yeah. Capital flows along the path of least resistance. This is why in 2007, the pathways to resistance was real estate. And in 2019, it was like all this trendy, like social media stuff. Yeah. Which fell apart. Or like in 2017, uh, a lot of it was, remember the ICO craze, when it was yeah, like every new random that. crypto. And yeah. I could tell some of these flat on their face were ridiculous. Yeah. There's the one that was called like Reddit coin. It's yeah. like crypto, for, like what does that mean? That's like, like the one these days. It's like the, the pump and like Shiba Inu or like yep. fucking yep. whatever the next Dogecoin is, you know, like. Or they'll, they'll say like, yeah, this is the next Dogecoin. It's gonna like hundred x. Yeah, like, like no, I'm, I fucking won't. I'm not. I'm not looking for for things that are speculative. Things yeah. that I think make a quick buck. I got on a chain link and did pretty well because I could see this being a ten year trend. Right. And it. it I'd say I, I did. Oh, it, I'd say I pretty damn good with it. I think you did a great job yeah. for sure. I mean, I got in pretty late, but uh, technology wise, I believe in it, dude. I had yeah. my first, I had my very first crypto exchange. Like, I bought something with crypto for the first time mm -hmm. yesterday. My buddy bought a movie ticket to Fast Nine. Oh, okay. And. Uh, I was like, he's like, yeah, oh, so just, he's like, you're just, saying you like, you bought a real world asset with crypto. Well, like, so like I, I bought it from him technically. Okay. So he, he bought it. He bought it with actual no, money. Nonetheless, so like you, right, you bought like a real yeah. world asset. Right. right exactly. Okay. Right. Nice. So I, so he, he said, uh, he's like, yeah, just uh, Venmo me $13. And I was like, I was like, uh, jokingly, I said, I said, uh, you got your Coinbase wallet, uh, <laughs> scan your QR code. I'll just yeah. send you, it's, I'll send you like 12 bucks of Ethereum, $13 of Ethereum. And he's like, I, I he's like, that. He started laughing and I was like, "What? Well, you want me? You want Ethereum? You want Sushi Swap? You want uh, you want Fiat? What do you want?" And he's like, "Yeah, bro, give me some Fiat." And I was like, "Are you sure, bro? Come on, you take yep. the Ethereum." And he's like, "He's like, all right, bro, let me try. Let's try it out." Yeah. And, and I was like, "All right, put the QR code up." He put the QR code up, and then it was like, like literally, it didn't even have to scan the entire thing. It just like put his wallet address up, and I clicked send. And he's like, "Wow, that was so fucking fast." And I was like, "Dude, I know that's faster yep. than like you get it from Venmo, and then like Venmo to your bank account. That's like it'd be faster." Yeah. Than that. How long does an ACH? Yeah transfer take like, like at, it, it says processing on your bank account for two days at the like, fastest yeah. it'll be 24 hours at 24 the, hours. Fastest, the fastest everything is yeah. going warp speed yeah, yeah exactly yeah and ethereum was like literally 35 network ne network confirmations and uh we left my house at like i, I live six minutes away from the movie theater so i like I, I bought it like right before we left and then we were like at the movie theater he's like oh bro i just got it and i was like yep wow that was fast like so now let's think of the implications this has for global commerce yeah so if I am an American manufacturing company, or, or any company, but let's say I'm an American manufacturing company, and I want to buy a whole bunch of steel mm -hmm. from ArcelorMittal, which is an Indian company. Oh, MT, bro. Yep. Yeah. I don't got to do a wire transfer, yeah. pay the fees on that, or I don't, I don't have to ACH it and wait yeah. you know, a while for that. I can just whoop, send yeah, them right through send crypto. It, yeah, send the minor fee and you're done. And frankly, yeah. maybe you can do that with stable coins. Yeah. Oh, you know? like yeah, like Tether and stuff? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I'm personally not a fan of stable coins, but I'm yeah. just saying, if you wanted that USD exposure, I just, maybe, maybe something interesting to think about, but like, yeah. blockchain is going to open up so many things. You know, here, here's what I say is really interesting. Um, I said this on, uh, on one of my uh, more recent YouTube videos, but I would say why this could disrupt financial services so much yeah. is if you ask what is the product that banks or financial services provide, most people would say capital. Mm. I actually disagree. I think the real product is trust. Here's mm. why I say that okay. is banks don't have magic bank money. That's true. It's someone else's money. It it's is. Money that was deposited. They borrowed it. Yeah, technically. money. Yeah. yeah. Well, they, they, no, that's true. Legitimate. Yeah. Legitimate. I mean, a they deposit is yeah. technically it's, it's on their liability side of the balance sheet. Uh, or let's say they're an investment bank and they're helping you know a company raise capital through issuing bonds or issuing stock. Either way, they're a middleman connecting capital from a source to a capital destination. Right. Well, what if we can move that concept to trust? Because the reason why people go to banks is it's a trusted source mm. to aggregate this capital. Right. What if we could move that to a digitized, to the blockchain, open source yep. system where people have trust in this computer code because right. it's been validated? It is uncensorable. It is not dependent on government intervention. It's not dependent on lawyers because it is a set of computer code. It's not going to cheat you because the computer's not smart enough. It's just a right. computer. Yeah. Oh, they're, they're, they're not going Skynet yet. They're not going the yeah. Matrix yet yeah, on yeah, us. Yeah, so yeah, not yet. We'll, we'll deal that when yeah. we get there. But it's like, it's like 100 years from now, maybe. Uh, right yeah. now, it's just a machine. It does what it's told. Yeah. So we don't need a whole army of lawyers to make sure the contract's going. Just the computer will execute the code. Mm. What if we move that concept of trust from this human-based system of lawyers, of governments, of stock exchanges, of banks with fees on top of fees? What if we move this whole platform to something that is digital? that's open source and have that what we place our trust in and have that be what aggregates capital. 
Where does this rabbit hole go? I have no idea, but Dude, I know this trend the, is not going to stop. Yeah, there's so a this rabbit is hole. I want to be involved. Yeah, there's a rabbit hole like yeah. that mm. for sure. Yeah, because just just the just how instantaneous and I mean, six minutes versus forty eight hours is instant is, is instantaneous in in our in our perspective, sure, right? Sure, sure, um, sure. Like how instantaneous transfers that would change everything yeah. that would just be a game changer for everything i, I would say this um, though because yeah. there, there have been some crypto projects that have been talking about they can send money at like super fast warp speeds i think what we're talking about is kind of convenience for personal payments but one thing i yeah. want to stress this is why i stayed away from some certain projects uh, right. xrp specifically is that a it's lot decentralized right well th there's that too yeah. but when we're talking about moving money at warp speed some companies right. don't necessarily need this companies for these big contracts like billion dollar contracts they settle on a net 30 basis, meaning you can take up to 30 days oh, to pay it. Like so whether dated. it's a transaction in three seconds or six minutes or even 24 hours, yeah. it doesn't necessarily matter as yeah, much. Okay, what okay, I find it really sense. interesting though is what this blockchain technology could do in terms of smart contracts, mm. in terms of the value add. Not just moving money from point A to point B, but how can we transform this money, meaning have these self-executing legal agreements, like really anything you can now put on the blockchain, whether it's a bond. Right. right bonds we could all make that potentially oh, digitized wow over the counter derivatives well right. they would be over the counter the more they'd all be blockchain based wow so like there there wouldn't really be any need for any of this like legacy on-prem stuff you can kind of just throw it in the uh, i guess blockchain is the equivalent of like the cloud right uh yeah i'd say what we're doing yeah. is we're moving to a concept of a web 3.0 web 3.0 web... oh and cloud is web 2.0 yeah cloud yeah. is well cloud and social media is web 2.0 right before that we had these small independent servers uh, in a way, though, that was kind of nice because, uh, you know, only with Web 2.0 was it normal to put your real name on the Internet. Right. Before that, it was considered weird to put your, weird, uh, your you real put name on the Internet. You put an alias. You put uh, your, your uh, yeah, screen name. Yeah, kind of your own yeah. like, You don't know who's yeah. out there. Like, exactly. you don't know what weirdos are out there. And then, yeah, lo and bro. behold, you have all this, like, cancel culture stuff because yeah, yeah, you have, yeah. like, all these weirdos who don't have a job who are, like, sitting at home yeah, in their yeah, mom's yeah, basement, yeah. Yep. like, spazzing out on someone. So I think yeah. Web 3.0, we might actually go back to that. Go back to anonymity. You know, what, yeah. what, what I'm seeing, actually, which is really interesting, is... I'm kind of seeing the revival of forums a little bit. Yeah. So I noticed probably like 2019, maybe 2020, most of my time was social media, like like everybody was. Right. And I noticed kind of more recently, I spent a lot more time on things like Telegram, uh, these little private forums that really been sprouting up lately, or yet these new things like Substack is huge now. Oh, I love Substack. I didn't even know what Substack, Substack was. Substack is so cool, man. I yeah. didn't know what Substack was early yeah. in 2020. It has really taken off. They brought yeah. back blogging. Yeah, and so far these guys blogging have, is cool. Email lists are cool. Like yeah, these yeah. guys also like I'll give credit where it's due. Like they have a rock solid free speech strategy. You have people from the left, people from the right, people that aren't even political at all on there. Like I, I give Mark Andreessen and his team credit for uh, for being a fair player. Which I mean we we need some more fair players and we need some more just honest adult conversations instead is, of just clickbait. Is Substack decentralized technically? Uh, no, 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 right? No. So okay. that is potentially a single point of failure. But what I do find nice though is that. This model of email newsletters is now validated, and this is very simple technology. Yep, agreed. email's been around since literally what, like, Mailchimp, bro. Yeah, like, like this has been yeah. around since like with well, the '90s, maybe earlier, yeah. like the '80s with like yeah. Usenet. I mean, that kind of shows my age, um, like me even know what Usenet is. But what's his name? It's very old technology. Yeah, yeah. There was all these, all these uh, internet, all the, all the early internet marketers. Uh, they, yep. they loved getting, they loved giving out free stuff mm -hmm. for just an email address, because yep. then like over the lifetime value of an email is like thousands of dollars compared to just yeah. uh, selling a product to somebody one time. Yeah, I think this is gonna make media a lot more sane because what made clickbait culture and outrage culture so prevalent is content was monetized from advertisements. Right. So for that, you need clicks. So right. you could even make something that is totally fake, totally outrageous, People will still click on it to hate on it. Yeah. They'll click on it to and hate get, on it. And you'll they'll, get uh, the advertising. They'll already. click on it to criticize you, yep. or maybe they like it, or maybe they like yeah. whatever. Either way, though, you get traffic. Doesn't matter if they like you, they hate yep. you, whatever, you'll get traffic. Yep. Is this good for public discourse? Well, if you've seen the last 10 years, no. But what Substack does, though, is yeah. they now move the monetization to a subscription based system. But you could charge as low as like a dollar, a, a, a penny. So wow. you could say, hey, I'm an independent content creator, I'm an independent journalist. Here's some of my free content. You can take a look. And uh, for my paid content, I charge two dollars a month. Two dollars a month. That's yeah. less than a beer at a bar. It's yeah. less than a chips and salsa. Exactly. But if you like my content, and over enough subscribers, that could then add up. Yeah. So that is going to decentralize a lot of these legacy institutions, like the legacy news networks, the legacy newspapers, and because in a way they're kind of the middlemen. They are. Well, now instead of having this middleman being like the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, or whatever, now we can have journalists and content creators talk directly to the subscribers. Mm. So it's, it's this is actually better oh, for the journalists. That's right. The journalists this can is actually go better for them to too. us instead this is, of yeah. Yep. This is better for them too. Yeah. Instead of reporting it to the news, and the news reports it to us. Yep. In their own 
in their own way yeah. that generates ads to, for yeah. you know whatever side that they're they're picking at the moment. Yeah. Wow. So it's literally straight from news. It's like straight yep. news to consumer. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. That's big. I'm gonna let that marinate a little bit. Yeah. We'll pause this. That's yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Definitely excited for the Substack model to uh, to take over. So uh, right now, so you just left the military. Yep. You're about to go to business school. Fucking slaying life. You're taking going, a little you're time going, off. Yeah, you're, uh, going into your, you're going into your prime as a as a, as a man. You know, yeah, prime, man's say, prime is you know later later in his thirties. You know, so yeah, you're, you're taking a little there. time off. So yeah. uh, I've been enjoying kind of a staycation in the Austin and Dallas area. So I stationed at Fort Hood, which is kind of right between the middle two. We're up in Dallas now, and I'm um, uh, actually going to be taking a trip in a couple weeks to uh, go to Las Vegas. Nice. So uh, classic. Yeah, you know, Vegas is uh, is the the old reliable. Old reliable. Uh, we're looking at a little international travel like Mykonos or Tulum and might cross that bridge at some point. Uh, fortunate that they're open because I want to do a bit more international travel just in general. Just, yeah. I can get into countries, it's a matter of what's actually open on the ground. So Mykonos, true, yeah. Tulum, they're open. Uh, but, you know, I, I think it might be more fun maybe to cross that bridge at another point. So we'll, we'll do old reliable Vegas for now. Um, I've heard Man, it's like it's packed classic. right now. Oh, dude, I, I bet you everyone's, right trying, to, everyone's yeah. trying to get in there. Yeah. Um, so what, like, with, with all that said, so you said you're kind of staycation, chilling time, kind of like a this is your reset period, right? Mm -hmm. What uh, are you facing like a challenge or like what 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 do you, would you say is your biggest challenge you're facing as of right now? Yeah, you know, I, I feel like I'm in a pretty good place, but I would say one thing that I was thinking about this is more April or around May was uh, sort of that feeling of apprehension uh, of getting out of the military and moving on to something else because right. I've I've been in this since uh, like just barely under five years, so you, you be part of anything that long, especially for something that. Um, takes up a big portion of your life and something that you really made some great connections from. Uh, it's it's going to be a little bittersweet, a, a little yeah. difficult to leave. So yeah, uh, that trip to Nashville that made it a bit more real for me. That okay, this this is the the right move. I haven't made some horrible life decision yeah. on, on doing like, this. This is the next step. Yeah. Yeah, this is the next step. So I'm I feel like I'm actually in a, in a pretty good place. So a lot of for a while I was kind of figuring out what's next, but I feel like I have that path now, and I'm really fortunate that that I have a supportive crew around me. Uh, you know, some, some really great friends that I hope to be uh, lifelong friends with, and they've, they've definitely helped me out, um, out a lot with this journey. Nice. So I know the next challenge is going to be how do I turn this MBA into some type of full-time employment, whether that's, uh, who knows, maybe in a company of my own, or maybe that means I'm working for a cryptocurrency project, or maybe even a, a traditional uh, bank, or whatever the case may be. How do I move into financial services, whether it's in a traditional capacity or maybe this new capacity on the blockchain? That'll be the, the next question that hopefully this two years MB that that question will be answered. Nice. And uh, can you can you elab, can you explain this phrase that Bowtie Bull says a lot? Banks are zeros. Mm. <laughs> well, sure. I, I think yeah. what he's talking about. I think is... uh, the like my my audience. I mean, uh, I don't have many subscribers, but everybody that watches this is every time I have a new guest for a podcast is uh, they always talk about something different. Yep. Sometimes it's about fitness, sometimes mm -hmm. it's about life development, game, sure. music, whatever. Right. From a financial perspective, mm -hmm. banks are zeros. Like we hear it, we hear it all the time. We laugh yeah. at it, right? When you tell somebody that, in in you know the normal world, they're like, nah, like banks are the future, or like whatever, right? Well, but, it's just yeah. something that they know. Yeah, exactly. It's not necessarily that it's a, a hot business anymore. In the two thousands, oh hell yeah, it was a hot business. Everyone wanted to be an investment banker back then. Yeah. Nineteen eighties, oh hell yeah, everyone wanted to be Gordon Gecko or Boiler Room or something Boiler like that. Boiler Room, yeah. Well, look, the it, it's it's just a different world now. Yeah. So if someone told me banks were zeros ten years ago, or five years ago, I might take it as a hater comment, but the way blockchain technology is moving, I think a lot of these systems could move to something else. Now, look, I don't think fiat currency is going to go away. Yeah. I just don't. I think we may see a parallel system where it runs in conjunction with blockchain, uh, but I don't think it's going away. That's just my personal opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. So because of that, there will be some kind of fiat currency infrastructure. So I don't think banks are just going to disappear entirely. Hmm. But do I okay. think this landscape is going to change? Yes. And these things happen. Let's look at wealth management. Well, wealth management in the 1990s or and before meant some dude was calling you on the phone to sell you stocks over the phone. Right. The internet changed that game with discount brokers. And that game continues to change where now you can't just be some guy pitching a stock and charging 2% commission. Like that would be considered outrageous. Yeah. You're now expected to be a holistic financial advisor right. to help manage someone's portfolio in general. So these things happen. Like the only constant in financial services is change. At one point, financial services was precious metals when we were on a gold standard. That's true. Yeah. This is always in flux. This is always changing. So this is just kind of an evolution. Uh, when you make online content, you do have to be a little edgy for marketing purposes. So it is a provocative statement, but I think it is acknowledgement of reality that there is going to be some disruption going forward in financial services, that a lot of it is going to be irresponsible from uh, from the blockchain. 
And look, having worked in that space for seven years too, I mean, um, I met some brilliant people in the space and I met some people that, look, I, I'm not going to sugarcoat. They had their positions because of nepotism, mm. because of their network, not because of their competence. And Equal I've seen that. And by the way, yeah. the, anyone watching this that works in this space, not only are they not going to be offended, they're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. If you know, you know. Yeah, if, if you know, you know. Like, yeah. they're not going to get offended at all. Like, yep, nope, I know. I'm working with those guys or those are my competitors. So that that's just the hard reality. Like, the idea that you may have heard of the efficient markets hypothesis, which is everything in the market is perfectly priced in, so you oh. can't beat the market. Yeah, exactly. Well, that is predicated on the idea that you have a large number of rational investors that mm. know what they're doing. Right. I don't believe that. I think we have a bunch of people that don't know what they're doing, that are overly emotional. They don't know what they're doing. They, they got in their job because of nepotism, because of their personal connections, because of their network, mm. not because of just sheer objective competence. Or maybe they had a really good strategy that worked for a while, but it's just a different world now that they didn't adapt to changing economic realities. Uh, in a way, not to be a hater comment, but look, Warren Buffett has underperformed the S&P 500 past few years. Yeah, he has. Yep. Not a hater comment, that's just yeah, reality. That's just truth. Yeah. That's just truth. Like yeah. He does not have a good track record when it comes to investing in growth technology, and that has been the big driver in the 2010s. Yeah. So his value tilt of these you know, cash producing companies, like that's great, but the 2010s was all about growth technology. I mean, dude, if you're supposed to be the most brilliant investor, like you should be able to pivot. And again, this is not meant to be a hater comment. It's not meant to disparage this record. It just, look, you may have a strategy that worked for well for a while until a it doesn't. Yeah. Point being is though, is I'm not assuming that everyone in the market knows what they're doing. So yeah, of course there's inefficiencies in the market where you could buy things that are mispriced. If this was not the case, bubbles and crashes would never happen. True. Look, if we honestly think that humans are perfectly rational and perfectly efficient, we would not have wars. Yeah. We would not have crime. Yeah. It would be a perfect world. Like you said, there'd be no uh, greed. We and wouldn't have selfish. corruption. We'll, we'll yeah. Yeah. Greed, we yeah. wouldn't have corruption. Yeah. Everyone would get along. Nobody try to screw each other over. Yeah. Uh, or not even that. Just everyone would make totally rational decisions. They wouldn't impulse buy a bunch of crap when you're locked at home from yeah, quarantine yeah, 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 on Amazon. Yeah. It's like, oh, that looks cool and I'm so bored I'm going to buy it. Yeah, let me hop. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah it's, like, we it's, got, like, it's like eating when you're bored. Yeah, we got yeah. 5,000 years of human history that proves that unfortunately humanity, we have not evolved past our rationality. So how do we yeah. fix that? Look, I don't know. But what yeah. I can do is I can try to do what's best for my family, my friends, people around me, my network, and then hopefully build a good community from there that, that builds up and maybe make a positive difference from that. Right on. Dude, well said. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, there was a few things I know that we wanted to talk about, and uh, this is this is why I love this setting, or yeah. this is why I love this podcast because we can just jump from like financial conversations to fitness conversations back to financial, and yeah, back to great. fitness. So you're you're saying there's this thing in like the bro fitness online community about yeah. uh, cardio yeah, killing about your that. gains. Let's talk about that. So and I'm an avid, I love playing basketball. Mm -hmm. I love playing basketball. I love like just hours and hours of basketball, right? Um, and sometimes I do shy away from it because of that reason of like, oh man, if I do too much, it's going to kill my gains. If cardio but, yeah. killed gains, yeah. the NBA would not exist. Yeah, exactly. Professional sports would not exactly. exist. Yep. Yep. Special forces in the military, special operations, that would not exist. Like, right. look, bad nutrition kills your gains. Right. Now, let me be clear. If you want to be a power lifter, if that is your sport, if your sport is power lifting yeah. or your sport is bodybuilding, body yep. Maybe you want some different advice. I would yeah. still suggest some cardio just for health reasons. Right. Just if for nothing like else. literally heart and lung. Yeah, health. and maybe yeah. like, you know, especially for bodybuilder trying to get more cut, maybe some sprints yeah. could, could help with that too. So maybe some of the explosivity as opposed to like yep. long steady state. Yeah. But you know, I'd say the question is, what are you training for? Now, me, I was training for a tactical set of fitness. Where in the military, there's certain fitness right. standards. Like, you gotta go on those rock marches yeah, for hours and hours a day. Yeah. We don't bench press our enemies. Right, yeah. You, know, you move <laughs> under load, like yeah. carrying maybe 30 pounds of body armor, plus whatever kit you have, you know, your assault pack with ammunition or you know supplies, in my case, uh, engineer tools, or whatever the case may be. So you're moving under this load, running or walking, whatever the case may be, dismounted. That is a different type of fitness than purely just doing squats, deadlifts, bench press. That's great too. I love I love barbell I'm lifting. Saying, yeah. I know like the Mark Ripito disciples are gonna hate me from this, but like there's yeah. different modalities to training. Yeah. Like, they hate me already, bro. I, I, yeah, I talk look. so much shit about barbell deadlifting, squatting, and bench press on, on my channels like yeah. all the time. Well, I, I they're not even here anymore. <laughs> I, I find this stuff fun. I find it enjoyable. But keep in mind, you know, a lot of online fitness influencers, uh, the type of fitness they advocate is what they're good at. Uh, that's true. So the reason why they say, hey, only do barbells, only do kettlebells, only do body weight, whatever. That's because they're comfortable That's with their it. level of proficiency. Yeah, and uh, that's what their brand is about. That's what their brand is about because yeah. they're, they're trying to sell you something. And I've seen this a lot in the investment space too. Like 
if you went to Vanguard, who they make index funds, meaning passive investments, yep. they'll say VTI, VOO, that's all Passive you need. investing yep. is the truth, yep. ETFs are the truth, everything else is voodoo. Yeah. Hedge funds will, of course, say, hey, only go with us, you know, stock picking is the future. Yeah. Um, the reality is, well, it's, it's a bit more nuanced than that, but realize, you know, people are saying things because that is what their skin in the game is. That is their product, that is their brand. So the question I'd ask is, what are you training for? And mm. that would then dictate maybe how you what is program your, your training. Now, what is me, your individual goal? Yeah, so for me, kind of where I'm at is uh, now that I'm out of the military, I don't necessarily have to run as much. Uh, I still want to just for general health and just, uh, you know, I, I do enjoy it from time to time, just right. something different. But I am trying to put on a little bit more size, so I am focusing more on lifting. Uh, this week, though, I was taking kind of a deload because I've been lifting really hard for a while, so this is when I actually switch up to things right. like kettlebells or uh, kind of the explosivity, like CrossFit-style training right. or, uh, you know, even body weight. Right. Uh, there's a lot you can do with body weight, even to hit legs. 100%. Like, look Agreed. up the MTI leg blaster. It is yeah. 100% body weight. You will feel smoked. Your Shout legs will be MTI. destroyed. I'm yeah. Look that up. Mountain tactical. Yeah. Mountain your tactical, legs will yeah. be destroyed by, by the end of it. Nice. So there's a lot you can do with body weight, but it just depends. Like, what is it you're trying to train? If cardio killed gains, pro sports would not be a thing. Dang. I think that's 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 the best line that could have described that. Yeah. If if cardio killed gains, pro sports would not be a thing. Yeah. Now yeah. look. Now again, if you want to be a pure power lifter. Then, then maybe yeah, you'll, the you'll need yeah. a, well, yeah. it's because your sport is lifting. Right. So you're going to do what the sport says, which is lifting. Like in the military, I got better at push-ups because that's part of the fitness test right. by doing more push-ups. Of course. Bench press does not equal push-ups. Push-ups specific, equals push-ups. Sport-specific training. Yeah, you have to do the yeah. sport-specific training. And for the sport of powerlifting, the specific training is lifting. Right. I would suggest, though, that, you know, the question I'd ask, if maybe you're asking yourself the question, you haven't really thought about, what am I training for? Well, if I'm training for general health, you know, what is it to mean someone that's fit? And what I think of that is, well, someone that is generally healthy, but also someone who has the physical wherewithal to handle yourself uh, in, in a situation where we might need that. So right. obviously 2020, we saw a lot of instability. So when it comes to even things like your personal safety or self-defense, if you get hit by a freaking hurricane and you gotta, you know, climb out of some kind of debris or rubble. Right. Like there's more things Functional than just- Functional movement. Yeah, there's more things than just mass riots or yep. like some crazy drunk guy at a bar or popping off at you. Like you could have disasters, anything where physical fitness, like it may be more lives than your own that depend on your physical fitness. Mm -hmm. This is where kind of more functional style of training I think would benefit. Uh, I'd say one of the best things to do for like say something like mixed martial arts is uh, strength endurance. So this is where things like rucking could come into play, kettlebells, yep. and a degree of plain old boring running. Yeah. Like the most, the single most functional movement is running. It's true, running is you're using everything. And, and there's a lot of I'm 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 a little biased because a lot of my older clientele doesn't have the best joints. Sure. And they're um, they're a little overweight sometimes, you know. And yep. so like running puts puts a lot of stress on the knees and, and other joints. But running uses literally every muscle and joint. It's it's a full body workout. Yeah, look, as hunter gatherers, it, yeah. as hunter gatherers, we're not hunting things with like you know that that fancy new Sig tread rifle, which is like sick. Yeah, I think it's sick. No, no, no. Bare we're, hands. We're bro. running people down, like hitting yeah. with spears or like rocks yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever. So they were, they were sprinting and walking yeah. long distances. And like. yeah, maybe someone wants to argue that hey, the cardio modality was more sprinting rather than long distance. Either way, though, it's some form of cardio. Like you got it, dude. Yeah. Let's think about general health here. Like you got to take care of your heart. You only get one. Same thing. Yeah. At your body, like you're you're you get you get to rent your body. It, people yep. talk about it's like people compare the body to a car. It's like oh, you got to fuel it properly. Mm -hmm. You got to do maintenance on it. But you can always buy another car. You can't buy another body. Right. Like you only get you only get one. Right. Alex is right. Like right. that's it. So you gotta you gotta take care of what you've been given. Yep. And uh, it's okay if if you lose one percent of your gains, but you gain ninety percent of heart health. Like that's a yeah. That's a good trade off, you know, yeah. in my book. But yeah. yeah so you. At the end of the day, I, I I won't go on a jog, but I will play basketball for a few hours. Yeah, but. unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. I think there's sort of this uh, mythos in online men's communities that say, yeah. oh, I only lift because I'm an alpha. It's like, dude, yeah, shut yeah, up, yeah. man. Bro, yeah, shut get up, out of here, dude. yeah. Like, just because someone has like 10,000 posts on XYZ forum, yeah. that doesn't mean they actually know what they're talking exactly, about. Or maybe yeah. they do in certain specific skills. Yeah. But like, Think for yourself, do your own research, just because like some online mince community said, oh, I'm man. super based in red pilled, so yeah, I only yeah, do barbell yeah, lifting. Yeah, yeah. It's like... <laughs> Uh, okay, bro. Man. Uh, oh, okay, bro. Cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. I feel like I feel like we've seen we've seen some of the same posts on the same online men's communities. Yeah. But uh, yeah, do you remember, I remember when I was in like high school, I used to just type in like any question I had. I would just type it in Google and I would type in forums.bodybuilding.com. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah. there was so much stuff on there, but there was so much conflicting advice, you know. Yeah. And then as you get yeah. older, I think I think through experience, you you learn exactly what your body is like can handle and can't handle, and what 
movements and yeah you know, and exercises you I like. I would say but. too is I think probably uh, one of the other kind of myths that I want to maybe address is that of overtraining. Mm. And I think some of this advice is well intentioned, but I'll be honest, when I was doing the the by the book, hey, lift three times a week for thirty to sixty minutes, I was not getting nearly the amount of gains as working out six times a week for longer than that. Uh, so I was pushing my body far beyond what the textbook says, but look, this is how pro athletes train. Actually, no, they train harder than that. They train way harder, yeah. They train way harder than that. So you can probably push yourself a lot harder than you give yourself credit for. Now, right. you will know when you feel overtrained. Yeah. I hit that wall last week, so I said, okay, I need a little break. Deload a little bit. So this week I'm taking it easy a little bit. It's called a deload. Yep. You will know that when you get there. Right. You'll know that when you get there. Now, of course, if you're just starting out, then okay, that's fine. Start out easy. But this comment is kind of geared to people that have been doing this for a while and looking to ramp up a little bit. Right. I noticed my workouts around 2014 definitely ramped up intensity when I mentally said to myself, hey, I'm going to train it for OCS. Because oh, now I'm nice. training with a purpose. Yeah, you have some, you have a goal. You have a goal yeah. in mind. And then when I actually got into the military, so when I'm in OCS, now I'm working out with guys that some of these guys played Division One college sports. Wow. So they're in shape yeah. and shape. They're in shape and we do our morning workouts, which is regimented, like OCS takes us through it. It'd be at night, like, hey, you want to go to the gym? I'm like, dude, we just got smoked this morning. It's like, yeah, you want to go to the gym? I'm like, yeah, uh, sure, why not? That's like normal for these guys. Yeah, and yeah. what I learned from that and is- And you too now, yeah. yeah. You can push, and look, I'm nowhere near the level of physical fitness, I'll be right. honest, but like, what I learned from it is you can push yourself probably a lot further than you give yourself credit for. Now, to carry yourself, do Shout stretching. Shout out David Goggins. Yeah, do stretching, film rolling, massage yeah. therapy, you know, yoga to get your mind right, whatever you need to do. Uh, but you can probably push yourself a lot harder than you give yourself credit for. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's the case. That's the case with everything. It's like you can always do more mm -hmm. than what you expect. Uh, I think David Goggins calls it like the 40% rule. It's like when you think you're done, you've only expended mm -hmm. like 40% of yeah. your um, energy or mindset or whatever, you know? Like, yeah. yeah. And it, yeah. It's a good feeling when you're done with it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so I'd say one of the, the hardest physical things that I did. So I went through uh, aerosol school. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the final part of aerosol school, it's a 12 mile rock march, which I, I've done 12 milers before, but. This one just hit different for some reason. So it's two times standard, three hours. Which, okay, now I've, I've done that, you know, I've, it'll be okay. But it was rainy that day, it was hot. So not only is it oh. hot and humid, but it's also muddy. Raining. So my uh. boots are like getting mud all over them. Like it was a suck fest. Plus yeah. I'm carrying this ruck. And an aerosol, they make you carry this like stupid dummy rifle. So yeah. it's like harder to swing your arms a little oh, bit. Oh man. Uh, it was a suck fest. It, like my time, I think it was like two hours 51. So I mean, I made it. Right. I was just done by the end of it. Yeah. But it was such a good feeling. Yeah. So at the turnaround point, because it's you go down, you come back. At the turnaround point, they give you your air assault wings. Yeah. And it's like after that, it's like okay, I can't stop now. Yeah, you can't. I, you I gotta, gotta keep make going. It. I yeah. gotta make it. Right. Uh, so getting to the end, um, one of the students, uh, she gave me because uh, she finished a bit before me, uh, this thing of like um, it's like a candy bar. I immediately like felt better after that. Just so my blood sugar was so depleted. Oh yeah, of course. It was like night and day. As soon as I, it, it actually no, it was just like a little cereal bar. Yeah. Um, but after that, it was immediately back to normal. Yeah. It's that little blood sugar spike, and yep. it got me back. Yeah, you need. It's such shit. a good feeling though when you're done. Oh yeah, it's I, anytime you accomplish something yeah. that it just seems so daunting. Yeah. And tough, and this can be anything, not just fitness related, but just anything in your life. When you overcome it, it's like wow. Like, I, I'm I would, at another level. Now. I would say this too, yeah. like for for people at home uh, that are watching that, you know, maybe they're they're not in the military, but they want to still feel that sense of accomplishment. If you're a big barbell training guy, um, I got this from Nick Bear. Try a hundred rep challenge. Mm. So pick a weight. Um, I did this once, just 135 on squats, 135 on bench. So there's two 45s. Uh, 100 reps on squats and then go 100, pen, uh, 100 reps on bench and see how fast you can do it. Wow. Now, proper form, no half repping. Taking breaks. Yeah, you're, you're going to yeah. take breaks. Right. You're not going to do just 100 reps yeah, straight. Yeah, yeah. So, but see how fast you can do that and you'll you'll find a pretty good uh, pretty good smoke session from that. And wow. The next time, go maybe a, a little bit faster. Yeah. Uh, or another great workout is uh, the Murph. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, so 300, 300 squats. With, uh, right? with a weight vest yeah. or uh, if you're in the military or law enforcement, you wear your, your bulletproof vest or, or plate carrier, uh, you run a mile. Run a mile. Then 100 pull-ups, pull 200 push-ups, 300 air squats yep. uh, well, with, with the weight, and then you finish with another mile. Finish with a mile, yep. So I did that for uh, Memorial Day because it's it's a big Memorial Day thing, and a lot of CrossFit gyms uh, will do that for their Memorial Day workout. Nice. Uh, my last time was uh, 4240. So wow. it's uh, elite-level CrossFitters, they'll do it in like the 30s. Wow. So I mean, I'm, I'm not there yet, but it, it's it's a beast of a workout. Yeah. Um, the, the, run, the run sucked for me, but I, I made up a lot of time on the bodyweight stuff. Right. I'm just looking at the yeah, notes that we took uh, for earlier. Um, yeah. Wow. The Mur Yeah. The Murph. I need. I need to do one. I need to do one and record it. That's, I, that's I really recommend it because it, it's. I feel it's very functional. 
and it's something anyone can do. All you really need is a pull-up bar. Right. The, the weight vest, yeah, it's encouraged, but if you don't have it, then okay, then yeah. do it without it. 100 pull-ups with just body weight is still pretty fucking tough. Now, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I break it into sets, yeah. so I'll do like 10, 20, 30, so 10 pull-ups, 20 push-ups, 30 air squats, so you can do like 5, 10, 15. Oh, instead of doing it all at well, once. Well, there are some purists that say, oh, you have to do all the pull-ups and all the push-ups. Like, all at I, once, yeah. I'll, I'll leave that up to you guys, your, your adults. I mean, either way, you're getting in a pretty pretty legit workout. Right? That's awesome. Do your Mercs, guys. Yeah. Do, do hard shit. Do it for and, Memorial Day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or, uh, well... Next July Fourth, remember like yeah, any, so any holiday. Yeah. The the story yeah. behind the Murph and why it's done so much on Memorial Day. So you know Memorial Day, we we remember our, our fallen service members. So it was named after. Um, you seen the movie uh, Lone Survivor, or kind of know what I'm talking about? The I've seals heard, in yeah, Afghanistan. I've heard it. Yeah, yeah. So the seal uh, platoon leader, or maybe, maybe they call it something else. I'm familiar with Army Marine type right. terms. So they're, they're a platoon leader, mm-hmm. Lieutenant Michael Murphy. Uh, he was killed in action in okay. that uh, Operation Red Wings. Right. This was his workout in Afghanistan. Oh, he did that? Yeah, this is his okay. workout. So this oh, workout was named after him. That's cool. Yeah. Dang. You learn something new every day. Learn some history. Yep. Cool. Uh, we'll take a short break, and sure. then definitely want to talk about one more thing, and then some fun questions at the end, and then we'll awesome. call it here in a second. Cool. cool. Yeah, last thing I want to end on, and I think we have maybe another 10-ish, maybe 15 minutes if I can push it. Um, sure. But one thing that uh, we texted about was social media before and after sure. like the mm-hmm. people say how bad social media is and then like but oh shit. yeah well oh, let's right, let's well, talk about that, was that so candid that was great okay yeah go ahead <laughs> yeah look i mean i i think some of the criticism uh, of clickbait culture and cancel culture is fair but i act and this may be unpopular to say but i do think social media has been a net positive and i'll, I'll tell you why uh it, it depends how you use it right Instagram 100%. can be your social resume, and this can be a great way to connect with people. Right. I've had a lot of soft connections that I firmed up because of social media, whether it's LinkedIn or Instagram, that you meet someone kind of in passing, and you use your social media as a way to put your content out there, and this soft connection now becomes now a, a long-term friend. True. So you can definitely use it in a productive manner. I'd say this too, because I think, look, a lot of people are kind of frustrated with what they see maybe in politics or in the culture, and you're not even wrong. Like, I get what you guys are saying, but let's look into this way. What if we didn't have social media? Social media now also gives people that have been vilified from the media a way to defend themselves and put their mm. own stories out there. True. Look, this stuff is not new. Yellow journalism has been around since, you know, forever. Right. Since people started writing stuff down on paper. Right. Okay. Let's look at like some of the worst ideas in history, like communism and Nazism. This is way before any of this and, stuff. And we work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like this is way, this is like the body counts, like Pol Pot or like oh, Stalin, oh, you yeah, know, yeah, Hitler, yeah, like. Yeah. Look, this stuff was way before social media, so like, let's yeah. not get too carried away that society's falling apart. Like, yeah, we've been society's some, been fucked for a while. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's been bad for, there's a, been for a, lot a while. Of, there's like, a lot of messed up stuff. So yeah. this is our kind of new thing that we're dealing with. But I mean, would we rather have World War Three in Syria? I mean, social media yeah. now gives us a way to discuss issues that go outside of just what corporate media is saying. Right? Would we rather have like l- permanent lockdowns now? Because like the what were they called like the delta variant yeah whatever yeah Something. so look yeah. I, when it comes to talk of the censorship and some of the bias look i get it i agree you're not even wrong right and these criticisms are still valid but i definitely think the internet still despite all the downsides has been a positive force but let, let's also talk about that the censorship and some yep. platform okay. issues with things yeah. like facebook or youtube this is why i've been branching out other platforms yeah. yeah this is why i've been branching out to other platforms like spotify or others uh new players will come in right it's always kind of in this like snide mindset of youtube like hey if you don't like it go somewhere else there was nowhere else but now there are there are more places and now. this is the exact same mindset that cities like new york and san francisco had like you hey if you don't like, like it, it go, go somewhere else, else. Yeah. Well, now people are with work from home right likewise too now the this hyper centralization internet that we had in the 2010s right i think we're gonna look back at this as kind of an aberration before the 2010s before the mega sites the facebook's the youtube's the twitter's dominated all the traffic there's lots of small sites that kind of all link to each other. Yeah. Because of this Google and Yahoo, because Yahoo was a thing back then. Yeah. They had they to be big. a fair player. Yeah. They had to be a fair player because the field was so decentralized. Right. Well, then it became hyper concentrated. Now things are starting to widen back out. Mm. Not Web 1.0 with old V bolts and forums, but you have new things like Telegram is now huge. Oh, it's big. Everyone's on everyone's Telegram. like going off of like yeah. the big platforms and going to Telegram because it's less. It's not censored because yeah, they have their own private communities. Yeah, well, it's founded by a Russian dissident, Pavel yeah. Durov. Dude, Russian dissidents they straight don't care. They don't care. They yeah. Don't care <laughs> yeah. about woke culture at all. They're used yeah. to dealing with real authoritarians. Yeah. They're used to dealing they're, with Putin. They're the deal with. They're dealing with the real problem, real world problems, yeah. not first world. They're, problems. they're used to dealing with Putin with like the Russian mafia. Yeah. Like they're used to dealing with real corruption. Yeah. You know so. 
Telegram will, will be good. Uh, Substack, Substack's taking off. Mark Andreessen, I want to give a big shout out to his team. Like they're, they're doing pretty like fair play, which they're letting the right speak, they're letting the left speak, they're letting non-political people speak. I'm okay with that. Right. I'm, cool that I'm okay with having a fair player. Uh, some new things that I, I, I didn't even know what they were, but apparently in uh, Eastern Europe or other parts of the world, there's this thing called a VK, which it's like their version of Facebook. It's I think it's out of Russia. Oh, okay. But in Eastern Europe, you know, VK is, is starting to become really popular. So you're starting to see these localized, regionalized social medias too. I'm all for more competition in the space. Uh, I tried posting a little bit on Rumble, which is trying to be YouTube competitor. Yeah. I think it didn't really take off because most of their content kind of is politics, which is fine, but that's not really my space. I'm here to talk about crypto. I'm here to talk right. about you know, military issues, just things I'm personally interested in. That's not really my space. But this new thing called Odyssey, I'm going to start posting there a little bit because apparently they're really taking off and they're really popular in the crypto space. So I think what we're going to yeah. see is we're going to go back to kind of smaller, more niche sites right. and, and more community-based sites instead of the communities of the whole world. Because the community is the whole world, then there is no community. Right. That's true. Yeah. I love uh, I love how a lot of the things that we've been talking about today has been like, okay, it started like this, and then it branched out of this, mm -hmm. and then the next level is like, it's going to go back to this. It's going to go back yeah. uh, in a different form. In it's different not going to be yeah. Web 1.0. We're going to move in a from... way more advanced version of this original piece. It's going to become more decentralized. So I asked this question at South by Southwest in 2019 uh, to, to one of the, the panelists there, because we're talking about content creation. He was given the idea that, hey, things are becoming a lot more democratized. I said, well, wait a minute. Yeah, anyone can start a WordPress site. Anyone can make a podcast in the sense that they record an MP3 file and upload it, right. but you still kind of need social media to drive traffic. And that can be subject to its own set of algorithms, its yep. own set of biases. He said, look, I get all that, but there's one thing you can never replace, and that is a human connection directly with somebody. Wow, that's true. So, And yep. that's, this is why sales is always going to be a job. Yep. So if you have an actual connection with your subscribers, with the people that you're reaching out to, that'll bypass whatever kind of censorship they throw you, because wow. you're going to figure it out. Yeah. You're going to figure it out. So let's talk about... Um, Alex I mean, Jones. What, what, I was about to say, like, yeah. let's talk about a controversial guy. guy. Yeah. No, controversial guy. Yep. Um, now, if anything, his bands are kind of part of his shtick. Dude, his it, it's bands kind of part are of his whole, so loyal and dedicated to him yeah it's uh, look i'm not even saying i i, I endorse but yeah. look his his Can't bands now guy, yeah his bands now are kind of almost like part of his whole act and and he's still around they figured it out so if you have a connection with somebody that will bypass uh and when i want to say bypass algorithms that are working against you this doesn't just mean in terms of censorship but it could just be in terms of a new algo update mm. that suddenly you had all this traffic and instead now they send this other video just from an arbitrary line of computer code that changed. Right. And you have no control of this. Well, if you have a real connection with somebody, they're they're gonna figure it out. They're mm. gonna figure it out. And I'd say getting on the more platforms is better. Okay. So yeah. Odyssey, I'm gonna check that out. But um, Spotify, I'm on Apple Podcasts. Yeah. Uh, and it sounds like some of my subscribers like it because they like watching the videos, but sometimes it's easier if they're driving in their they're car. Driving, yeah. Or driving just, the car, they can at the gym put and on Spotify. Some music, yep. 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 Or listen to your podcast. Yep. Yeah. Nice. Cool, man. And then these last, uh, these are kind of just the lightning round, rapid fire stuff. Hmm. And then, and then uh, after that, you can you can plug everything. Sure. Um, like maybe two, three sentences of everything, or just nah. some, some quick, some quick things, right? Sure. Let's do it. Uh, advice. If you go back in time, what advice would you give to your 18 year old self? Okay, I would say, well, what I would join is I would join the military sooner rather than later. Okay. And then after that, I would have moved to the kind of city that I'd like. Mm. So you, you got to be in the right kind of environment. Right. You got to be in the right kind of environment. So okay. if you're in the wrong environment, move. Figure right. it out. Just move. You got to be in the right environment. Mm. Okay. Uh, next question. You have a million dollars. You get it. You get it today. You get it on a Monday. Yep. And it has to be gone by that the next seven days. So on Sunday. Can you I invest it? You, or you can't invest Ooh. it. You cannot invest okay. it. You can't invest it in anything. You have to buy stuff with it. You have to spend it completely by that Sunday. What do you buy? Uh, can I give some of it away? You can. Okay. Yeah. So what I would do is I would I would prepay a lot of my living expenses for the next two years in oh, NBA school. Okay. Okay. Prepay that. Yeah. I might buy a couple luxury goods here and there, but honestly, here's what I would do. And I, I'm not just saying this. Is I think a lot of people uh, fell in some hard times in 2020. Yeah. So a lot of small businesses, a lot of restaurants mm. that closed, I got screwed. I would probably give some of this to the Barstool Fund. Uh, actually, here's one thing that I really want to do is um, one thing that kind of got me thinking about the negative consequence of social media. If you remember the UVA fraternity, that that Rolling Stone article back in the 2010s yeah, yeah, that yeah. said, hey, these guys are all a bunch of rapists, they're all a bunch yeah. of scumbags, yep. and they had serious death threats thrown at them. Some of these guys were attacked like really viciously, thrown under the bus, and it turns out much later that none of this none even of it happened. True. Yeah, yeah. I would like to just write these guys a check for $100,000. Yeah, wow. So some That's of big. these guys that were just thrown under the bus unfairly, uh, I, I want to help them out. So if, I, if this money has to be gone in a week, 
yeah. uh, I would give a big portion to the Barstool Fund. Right. And some of these people that unfortunately have the negative effects of social media, I would try to help them out. Right. Especially when it turns out much later that they were canceled, so to speak, for stuff that didn't that even didn't happen. happen. Yep. That didn't even happen. Yep. Dang. Yeah, that shit, that shit's pretty real these yep. days. Um, if you have dinner with three people, dead or alive, Ooh. all of human history, okay. who would you choose and why? Man. There's a lot to choose from. Yeah. There's a lot to choose from. Um, Top three. Okay. Well, one, I I don't know his real name, but uh, Satoshi Nakamoto. Oh, Satoshi Nakamoto. Yeah. Yep. I, I don't yep. know the real name. Yeah, but we don't know who that is. But I, yeah. I would love to pick his brain because the yeah. more I read the Bitcoin white paper, because I've read this white paper a few times. When, yeah. you see, when you see your white paper, you think it's like this huge document. It's like the Constitution. It's a really quick read. Yeah. It's, oh, okay. it's actually oh, wow. a really quick read. Perfect. Uh, but it, it's brilliant. Yeah. It is so brilliant. Like, I didn't appreciate the brilliance until much later, but like, yeah, this is a such a brilliant. Like, I would say. And a year ago, this would sound insane. I would say this is one of the most important anonymous documents in the history of our country since the Federalist Papers. Wow. Which is one of the founding, because the Federalist Papers, we found out who wrote it later. Right. But at the time, it was written anonymously. Right. Uh, I would say it's one of the most important documents since then. And wow. a year ago, that would sound insane. Now, I truly believe it. Okay. So, Satoshi, Satoshi. would be one. Yep. Um, hmm. I would say, uh, you know, because I'm, I'm really listening to American history, I'd say Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Dude, it's funny you say that. Yeah. I, a lot of people, when I ask this question, they say George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, or be, like Benjamin, like one, a founding father. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know Abraham Lincoln's not a technically a founding yep. father, but somebody like a president or somebody big in history. But yeah. Okay. So Abraham Lincoln. Yep. And I would say, and of course, you know, kind of controversial figure, but I would say uh, John Rockefeller. John Rockefeller. Yeah, if we want to talk oh. about the GOAT, we want to talk about Dude, the GOAT when it comes to business. He is John the GOAT. He is the yeah. GOAT, not going to lie. Yeah, controversial figure yeah. a little bit, but I mean, not, say, not to say you couldn't learn a, a ton from a guy like wow. that. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's a, that's a solid three, yeah. bro. Satoshi, Abe, Abe Lincoln, and uh, Rockefeller. Wow. Yeah. Um, we have two more questions. Sure. Next one, describe your ultimate sandwich. Oof. Ultimate sandwich. Yeah, you can put anything See, on I'm, it. I'm a big foodie. Yeah, you can I'm put a anything on it. I'm a big foodie. You know, that barbecue was yeah. uh, pretty amazing, so... Actually, you know what? One of my favorite things. This is actually one of the best sandwich I ever had. Yeah. So, again, big shout out to Lambert's in Austin. Lambert's. So, one of my favorite things on the menu is actually their burger. Now, you go to a barbecue place, you're going to try the brisket, of you're going to try the pulled pork, yeah, uh, the, the ribs, ribs everything. Yeah. Dude, their burger is amazing. Really? They, they put this barbecue sauce on it. Their beef is so good. That that right there, the perfect sandwich has already been made. It's already been made? Got, okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Lambert's burger. Okay. Yeah. Solid, solid. Um, favorite way to spend a rainy day? Uh, well, I had plenty of those when I was living in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. Um, you know, you could still go out on a rainy day. Just yeah. go out somewhere indoors. So, um, yeah, just spend some time with friends. Nice. Spend something, some time with something friends. Something chill, something yeah. low-key. Yeah. Nice. Cool, cool, cool. And, uh... If it's a warm rain, yeah. if it's not coming down too hard, uh, maybe go for a run. Okay, I like yeah. that. That's cool. Yeah, something yeah. active. Cool. You heard it here first. Alex, if you want to plug all your stuff, yeah, go so for it. Yeah, so alexcook.com, uh, that'll link to, uh, to all my social media, the YouTube and the podcast. So, uh... Check it out if you're interested. Uh, I got a little micro blog that I run on uh, Telegram. Kind of way to get uh, thoughts out a bit more uh, rapid fire fashion. But yeah, alexscott.com. Check out my YouTube, Spotify. So check it out if you're interested. Sounds good. I'm going to leave the link for all those in the description. If you want to send me the link for the Telegram, I'll throw sure. it down there. Yep. And I will join that as well. Cool. Because I didn't know you did that. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Dude, glad we made this happen. Absolutely. I know we've been trying to make, <laughs> trying to meet, trying to link up. Uh, yep. I think it's the first time we sat down in like. Uh, it's been a minute. Years, it's yeah. It's been a minute, For yeah. sure, for sure. But yeah, thanks for coming on the channel. Definitely. Uh, catch you guys later. Subscribe, comment, like, all that good stuff. And uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Cool.